Super chill. What is the episode? What? So what? So what? 231. Boys, we're cruising. We're cruising. We're cruising. Are we rolling? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys, episode 231. As the boys probably just discussed, you probably heard that. Let me tell you something, dude. Summer is here, and what better way to take advantage of all it has to offer with Chevy Silverado. Silverado Summer. Think of all the possibilities. From off-road adventures to DIY do-it-yourself project and hardcore work, Silverado has the capability and technology to make this summer your best one ever. With nine different Silverado models to choose from and engines that range from the powerful Turbomax to the 6.2-liter V8 and the Duramax diesel, you can count on Chevy power and performance to get you get anything done. Like many of you, we've been hitting the road a lot lately, and it seems like everywhere we go, there's an army of Silverados and Silverado owners. So, so shout out to all of you, Game Recognized Game. Head, head over to Chevy.com and check out Silverado and all the Chevy trucks, the official trucks of Bustin with the boys. In the state of Missouri. So yeah, well, back when I was home for the fourth, there's a lot of Silverados out and about. They roll like that? It's Silverado town, brother. No question. No question. You get out there in Missouri, man, it's like, Everyone just built different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, you saw it this weekend, dude. A lot of competitors out there, whether it was Power Slap or UFC, it just seems like a lot of dudes are just in that Missouri category. Mm. Fucking handling. Yeah, that, handling and you're saying that light heavyweight championship of Power Slap. Mm. We got the belt back home in Missouri. Yeah. Shout out Wolverine. The belt exactly where it needs to be. Yeah, yeah. Handling fucking business. Got his wife probably another set of fake tits. Yeah. So there, what a deal. Yeah, a couple, couple matches that included the Missouri folk, but Power Slap is like, the professional sport of places like Missouri. No question. You know what I mean? No question. It is consumed the flyover states. No disrespect <laughs> yeah. calling the flyover states. Yeah. No, no doubt it has truly taken over that, that area, that demographic for sure. It yeah. is, it's nuts, dude. And a lot of people are kind of, it's not a sport. It's not this. Dude, it is a spectacle to see. It is fun to watch it live. It is fun to watch live. It is wild. And I'm sure you guys, you know, with the way brains work nowadays, 15 seconds of having... You know, the, the, was it time span? Time. <laughs> the thing where you what can only focus about? for so long? Uh, retention. Attention yeah. span? Yeah, that's a tough word, attention. Yeah. That is the most easily consumable content you could probably get on the internet right now. Yeah. Just watching a dude get fucking smacked in the face like that is fucking wild. No doubt. No doubt. Dude, so, we've had uh, yeah. the most insane probably past really 10 days. I mean, we were on vacation. We were doing our 4th of July stuff. You were in, you were in Florida, yeah, which we can get into. I was in Missouri. Then we come back. We hit, I think we got back to Nashville on Wednesday. First flight out Thursday morning, 515 boy, get to New York. We get to interview Tom Segura, Chris Stefano. We have a nice little evening with the boys, get a little bit of sushi, rest up, fly out at like 720 the next day. Adversity, adversity struck that day. Yeah, for me. yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. We can get into that. And uh, we fly all the way to Vegas. So just changing time zones. Mm -hmm. We're in Vegas for 48 hours. I feel like we slept maybe five or six hours total in I, Vegas. I did the math, dude. We slept six hours. Yeah. It was, isn't that nuts? Yeah. And night one on Friday, we're drinking. We're having a good time with the boys. Mm. Saturday, we chill out, but we, you know, we, we make the night last till about 1.30 in the morning before we have to get up at 3.45 to make our 5.15 flight to get home for your daughter's birthday party, which, by the way, was in a phenomenal time. It was good. But we're just in it. Right when we land, we're like, hey, we got to get over. We got to make the birthday party. Right. We got to be dads. Got to be dads. But we've had an insane last 10 days or so. It really has been amazing, dude. It, it is one of those, especially when you get like, the, all the opportunities that came about in Vegas was just wild. Yeah. And I know that we had a conversation about two weeks before when I was talking to you. I was like, hey, man, I think this is, you need to come to Vegas. And here's why. And I kind of gave you the spiel of here's why. And sure enough, 48 hours later, like, the boy's coming. And then and three or four times I hit you with, hey, was it worth it? And you're like, oh. Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. After night yeah, one. First, you had your like first pitch, second pitch, the third and final pitch for yeah. sure. I was like, yeah, I need a... Mm. I gotta go. I'm truly and starting. I'm, I'm to, so happy. I'm truly starting to understand the strategy of how to get you places. You can't. <laughs> you can't do like hard. Hey, we got to do this. Let's go. Like that's not the way to do it with you. But the nudging, the slow movements, figuring out. It's a. It's a. It's nice when you finally start to figure out your buddy that way. You know, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's good. But incredible time. You want to get. You want to get into it. I know. Where do we start? I guess we start in New York, man. Let's. <clears throat> obviously, we had um. 
early flights out. Oh, well, we probably should start with our Fourth of Julys. People Fourth haven't July heard about phenomenal. Like we, uh, my partner and I, Adam Freud, we won the uh, cornhole tournament. Huge, about sixteen teams. It was a lot of fun. Missouri's a great time. Got some good camaraderie, good vibes with the old man, with my brothers. Rue getting to see everybody. Like it was a good time. And then Fourth of July ends. Uh, you know, with all the boys sitting around having a having a stogie, some bussing, some bussing piggyback whiskey. Love that. And uh, a little bit of Dairy Queen on the way home. Had to. But, dude, it was it was a great time. Then stay up late at night with the boy, Nick, where we were staying at. We, you know, we stayed up till about two in the morning just catching up and just talking life, talking shop. Then we drive back the next day, dude. But my 4th of July in Missouri was a good time. I love it, dude. And also, you were putting down a couple of those twisted teas. Dude, the twisted teas. Yeah, the twisted tea light. Mm -hmm. is the move because the twisted tea is like you know we're we're also in get jacked 2023 so yeah. you got to kind of watch like there is sugar involved with the regular twisted tea but you go that twisted tea light that is where it's at they taste phenomenal everybody's wanting to get them and i only you know i unfortunately only bought three cases because it was a you know b byob situation yeah three but uh just for the boy that's you were ready i knew i was gonna pass a few around but yeah. i just didn't know how i'd get and they go down nice like obviously twisted tea that's a dangerous boy because they taste so good yeah they taste just like just like a good old iced tea, dude. But without, you don't taste any alcohol. So mm. it's kind of like the whole jungle juice situation. You don't know until you know. Yeah, until it's over. And yeah, then all of a sudden you're spinning. blacked out. Yeah. 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 But uh, no, dude, it was uh, the Twisted Tea Light is definitely the move. And I was spreading the good the good news around Bonterre. By the way, the boys were fired up that were Twisted Tea crew. That's of, awesome. I feel like a lot of our generation, especially the guys, they're fired the fuck up about the Twisted Tea move. Yeah, I've gotten a few texts about it too, especially Chris Arnold. He hits me up a whole bunch. He is a big twisted tea guy. What he'll do with twisted tea is he has like these big jugs yeah, and he puts it in his fridge and he just pours only twisted tea in. And so it, he makes it look like he's just having a tea at yeah. the end of the day yeah. of like three or four of them things and coffee out on the, put it on the, the floor. Freezer, get some ice cubes yeah. and then fill it up. <clears throat> hey honey, it's all good. It's just tea. Yeah. Don't worry about it. So Tanner he's, is too because Tanner would always like you know, whisper to me throughout the day, like, hey, crush a twisted tea, crush a tall boy with me. And I'm like, yeah, Tanner, it's fucking one in the afternoon on right. a Wednesday. Right. Leave me alone. Dude, they love it. Those Arizona boys, they love the Twisted Tea for sure, man. They, it, it's a good time. I'm glad your 4th of July went so well. How was, uh, how was Italy? <laughs> how was Italy, Florida, dude? dude? 30A. <clears throat> well, we started off by driving. We drove. And, you know, it was it was straight. I had a, a bit of a situation with Bucky's. It, it was straight? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bucky's. I had a bit of a situation. So, my wife, or you guys... You guys, most of you guys know um, my wife is from Canada. And so her, her brother's in town. His girlfriend, now fiance, is in town. And we drive down to uh, 30A. And as we're going down, obviously, you're driving that little route about an hour and a half in. Bucky starts to pop up. And I start selling it. Like, brother, we're about to go to, like, the number one tour spot for low to middle class people. This is Hunter Pumps, Fudge, their jerky, barbecue, the whole thing. Best bathrooms you've ever, you've ever seen. Yeah. And people so, go out there, they get their food, and they go yeah. outside and tailgate, essentially. Yeah. So I made, like, I feel like anytime you're trying to sell somebody on something, you can't hype it up too much. You got to give it a little little grace because then they go in with the most, like, the highest of expectations. We go there, and to be honest with you, they weren't overly impressed, but I think that's what that's me doing that because I, I talked about it for about 30 minutes before we even got there. So that, like, I'm quiet after Bucky's for, like, the next hour. Like in my own head, like, yo, is Bucky's that great then? Is that it was Fourth of July weekend? Like, that's yeah. a destination spot. It was packed. Families was are visiting families packed. and they're like, let's yeah. go have a day at Bucky's. So I start, I get in my own head and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll, I'll regain this conversation when we get to, uh, get to New York. Cause on the way back, I did have a conversation with, with uh, Will and JP. Thankfully, <laughs> Will and JP were a good voice of reason for me. And I'm, I'm back where I need to be. But we it'll can be in the that. vlog. It's a good, yeah. it'll be in the vlog. So I get to Florida and, it's beautiful down there in 30A. There's like, you go to different spots. There's like Rosemary Beach and then it's like 30A and then it's Kaya and then it's like, just kind of keeps going down and they're all their own little unique cultures. Yeah. Kind of down there. Um, I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was immaculate. Rosemary, I thought was really awesome. The little shops, it does kind of remind you of like a European feel with the way the buildings are and stuff like that. Italy. And then 30A, like you get there and I think 30A is beautiful. However, it's so like, everything's like, white everything blends in it's so clean that i thought to myself this could be a horror movie where you kind of go in you're so excited but everyone's kind of dressed the same all the buildings are the same and then like it's one of those deals where like when night falls like you just can't go like some there's like one older lady it's like hey probably best you don't come out of your room 
after 7 p.m. And you're thinking, why? That's so weird. And then you hear scratchings at the door and stuff like that. Yeah. That's a whole thing I have to unpack with my own self. <laughs> but, dude, the first day I get in my little golf cart the next morning, and I go to the go to workout, the Rosemary Gym area, and I'm I'm ripping in my golf cart, and I get stopped, and they're like, "Hey, you can't have golf carts in this area." And I'm like, "What do you mean? I see golf carts everywhere." And they kind of take me out, and then I start to find out that 30A, like, you can't take photos of 30A because they consider themselves a brand, and there's only a certain amount of things you can do. And that's where, with me, when there's that many like random rules, what 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 30? You can't take photos of so 30A? 30A. Yeah, this is what I was told: is that 30A they view themselves as a brand. And so you can't necessarily take your own photos. Like you can't take iPhone photos there. Or you're not like, if they see you, if security sees you doing that, like, hey, you can't take photos here. Hey, you can't do this here. You I, can do it at Rosemary. I don't know if that's... You can't do it at, <laughs> you can do it at Kaya. I'm, I'm just telling you, a lot of photos. this is what people, this is what people were telling me. This is what people who live there are telling me. Like I was staying... Are you talking about Kaya. an Alice Beach? Yeah, uh, or Kaya in between or Rosemary and in between Kaya. So that little, like, I, I, it's the white pillars. And I, I was told, once you get to the White Pillars, you're technically in uh, Alice Beach. You're in Alice Beach. And then, so, is, am I wrong in saying that? I think it's saying that if you are not, the first article that pops up is just, you need to be a renting guest or owner to secure permission to shoot there. Okay, so just that in general, though, is like, why? Why can't yeah. you just take photos? It def I, like, out of all the beaches in Florida, 30A is definitely the most, like, stiff of all of them. Like, it's where a lot of... But hold, hold on, not to cut you off, but I was doing it, too. I think 30A is, like, the whole general area. Yeah, Alice 30A Beach, is, like, the, the highway, right? Yeah, it's, like, 30A is, like, Nashville. And then we're talking about, uh, like, East where Nashville. you stayed in Alice Beach, that is probably one of the nicer... It's so spots, nice. Probably yeah. the nicest in uh, the Gulf. Yeah. And it's really nice, but when I start hearing these rules, like, I was staying... And Kaya, which they're all right next to each other. Like, you're just like, talking about a street over. And these two dudes were walking by. I, I broke a watermelon. And I was really bummed out about it. And they were kind of, like, consoling me <laughs> about it, which I didn't need that, but all right. They, they started talking to me, and I'm like, yeah. I told them about the golf cart thing. And then that's when they started telling me, hey, like, yeah, but you can't take photos in Alice Beach. And uh, we've been stopped multiple times. Like, one guy was flying a drone, and a security guard came up. And he's like, hey, you can't fly a drone here. You're in Alice Beach, blah, blah, blah. The line of Alice Beach and Rosemary or Kaya was like right behind him. He literally took two steps back and started flying the drone. The guy's like, all right, that's fair. Yeah, it's, 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 it's now, Alice Beach where right. you have to be a renting or actual owner to be able to legally shoot there, which is ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And so there was there were little things that I was like, man, because that's, that's where we go back to just me in general and the weird pet peeves I have, like the whole country club you got to dress a certain way type thing you got to act like a certain you're, way you were in the country club it sounds like i was yeah. yeah well i was in kaya but i was essentially right there with yeah. everything and i start you know the rules part was a bummer for me did you have to did you need a code to get into the area like, no because like, you just drive on that gated? road it's like the um fsh the florida scenic highway is kind of what it's called Are you in a gated community no i wasn't in a gated community but i feel like if you're renting that's where kind of my, my gated community like dislike kind of goes out because I'm just renting. It's all good. I'm not buying. I'm not purchasing. But I, other than that, I feel like I'm going to get the negative out of the way. I thought it was incredibly beautiful. I thought the sand was, dude, the sand's just different down there. Like it felt white, soft sand, dude. white, soft sand. I thought, you know, when they didn't, they said they didn't have waves. You know, I was like, man, that's kind of a bummer. Like, what are you going to do out there? Very calm seas. Everyone was having a good time at night. We were me and my kids, when the tide was out, were catching sand dollars and crabs and stuff like that. It was just a blast, man. It was so much fun. We did like a little um, fire pit thing, and my daughter's in the corner. And literally, it was the it was the fourth when that happened. My daughter's birthday is the fifth of July, and there's a there's a moment. I'm like sitting in a chair and I'm looking over and I'm looking at my looking at my five year old daughter win, and she's like kind of just making sandcastles and stuff. And there's the sun setting behind her, and I literally was like tearing up. Like, my God, she's, like, getting so old. I literally was, like, sitting there crying by myself. And then, like, Taylor comes up. She's like, are you, are you crying right now? I was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Let me just get a get Are you a about moment. to cry now? No. But I was, like, legitimately, like, holy shit, my kids are just getting older. It's just wild. Because yeah. Wynn is, like, at the age now, she's, like, a little girl. Yeah. There's no more, like, toddler and anything like that. Willow, you know, I got, a, we got, like, one or two more years there. But she's already talking. You hear her talk. And it's like, damn. Yeah. And then they just stop. Like, I remember yesterday when we were driving over, you're like, oh, man, when they start talking, it's going to be so awesome. There's a part of me, it's like, man, you just don't want to hear the next stage happen. Yeah. Because once that stage goes, it's like the old one in there anymore. The pointing and going never... like, ick, ick. Yeah. Like, that's gone. She'll be able to talk to me now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, once they get done crawling and they're walking there, they don't crawl anymore. Yeah. And then the fifth happens. So the next day, 
the fifth, win turn six. She's fired up. And I made a joke to her that I made to her yesterday, the day before she turned six. And she's kind of coloring. She looks at me and she goes, I'm six now, daddy. That's not funny. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the fuck, dude? Are you serious? So like that, now the rest of the day, I'm trying to make jokes. She goes, not funny, dad. I'm six over and over. And I'm like, you know what else happens when you're six? Yeah. You're allowed to get grounded. Yeah. <laughs> Go to your room. Yeah, go to your room. Yeah. Think about how your father's not yeah. funny. Yeah. Take a fucking walk, dude. <laughs> I was, that was like, damn, that's crazy. And the fifth is I literally left. I went, I flew back to, to Nashville because we had that early flight. So I took yeah. like a later flight out of Panama City. But it was fun, man. I really enjoyed 38. We'll have to go back. It's fucking hot right now, though. Yeah. When you were bringing up how hot it was, I was like, oh, yeah, I bet it is fucking it was damn near fucking peak there. Brutal. Brutal. Fourth of July week, like weekend and everything like that. Yeah, it was sure the there's a lot of people. Time, yeah. yeah. So the guys, those two guys that I was talking with that were telling me all the rules, they're like, you got to come down like November. That is the time. Like, no one's really here. It's fun. You can get in all the shops and all that. They're really lax in the rules. Like, you can kind of just do whatever. And I'm like, that's. It sounds like a good time. That's what I'm going to get there for sure. But yeah. that was a blast, dude. And then we go to New York. Yeah, New York, bro. Tom Segura, Chris Stefano, two phenomenal interviews. Those are going to be awesome. You guys are going to love them. But Tom is just like, you know, he loves ball. He loves college yeah. ball. So it came into like storytelling for all of us there for a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then HQ is like all the way cleaned out because, mm -hmm. they're, they're, you know, a lot of people are moving to Chicago. So a lot of things were getting like tidied up and set up for everybody at HQ this week. Like the new, it's going to be like Barstool Comedy, I think. Yeah. Out in New York. We're doing like sketches and stuff like that. Who'd you like more out of Tom and Chris? Um, or is it one of those things where we're like, you know, we love them each in their own right. I like them both. I think they were both completely different energies too. Yeah. The thing I really like comes in just, you know, he's ready. Just, yeah. Firing at the hip. He's ready. Yeah, to go. Have he's a, like a good time. Yeah. I caught myself laughing a whole bunch more with, uh, with Chris. Yeah. But the thing that was so nice for me is when, before we did our interview with Tom Segura, we had an individual tell us like, Hey, you got to, He's a little more reserved. You kind of got to work him through it a little Soft bit. Soft spoken. Soft spoken. And I didn't feel that the whole, like the minute we sat down, it was like boys hanging out. Yeah. It was a good fucking time. Dude, it was, man. And then this Stefano, like you said, dude, shooting from the hip, being fucking hilarious, like just saying offhand shit offhand, the whole time. Like, oh yeah, I can, yeah. I guess I can laugh at that. Yeah. I can laugh at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm, I'm allowed to laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he was, he was, uh, the Stefano gave me the vibe of Kreischer in a lot of ways where it's like, you kind of just ask one question and then he rolls for 20 minutes. Oh, he spoke about 85% yeah. of that podcast, yeah. which and is then, a good thing. Yeah. And then Segura was more like more all of us having a conversation. So I enjoyed both of them yeah. a lot. All yeah. that to say, I enjoyed them so much, dude. dude they were, yeah, they were fucking awesome. I loved that. And then I'll be, I mean, got a good night's sleep, woke up super early in the morning, but we were, I mean, I was in my room eight o'clock. And I probably was asleep. Like yeah, after, after we had dinner at that sushi spot, which, by the way, overpriced, don't go there. Yeah. Um, that place not a lot of selection, out. not a lot of selection. Yeah, very, or, like, traditional Japanese. Yeah. And the soy sauce they gave us, they, they, bloop, they gave got, Taylor, like, a teaspoon. And I was thinking sauce. to myself, brother, come on, what are we doing It here? was wild. It was wild. Yeah. Um, very, very New York. Very New York. When we wake up the next morning, I, we should go back. So the, so the day of doing those two interviews... I asked Will about his flight. I was like, hey, did you get on the same flight as me? He's like, I got, I got good news. I got bad news. Oh, yeah. Because that's what led to it. Yeah. Man, it feels like this stuff happened so long ago. So long ago. Remember you, yeah, this shit. With the lack of sleep and everything. Essentially, Will is like, I have a direct flight from JFK. And I'm flying from LaGuardia earlier in the morning than Will is. But I'm going to Austin, Texas. Then I'm going to Las Vegas. We, and we always fly out of LaGu LaGuardia. Yeah. We always fly out of LaGuardia after we do a New York trip. Taylor had booked his. I get on like, uh, Caitlin was booking ours through Barstool and everything. And she was like, hey, I found a nonstop at JFK. I'm like, how much farther away? She's like, probably 20 minutes, but it'll be a nonstop. And then the other one, the one that Taylor was on, she's like, there's no more, there's no more first class. She's like, there's no first class period, but you'd be in a middle seat on that one. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, well, let's do the nonstop because we're all going to get there. And then Taylor's like, I got good news and I got bad news because JP said something. Like, you said you got good news, you got bad news. I know, but remember JP sparks and I was like, oh yeah, I got to tell him. And I was like, hey, I got good news. I got bad news. I'm like, all right, what's the bad news? Because we're on different flights. And what was the good news? We're both going. To, we're all going to Vegas. Yeah, we're all going to Vegas. <laughs> so we start talking about it. And for me, like, I was in first class on LaGuardia, but I I would rather sit in the middle seat and have a direct flight than have to connect somewhere. I don't know, bro. I know. And I was like, you I'm make sure. your own decision just yeah. because I didn't want to feel like I was either pushing you to like, hey, come with us. Because I'm thinking he might just be in a middle seat. Like we're all in the main, we're all 
It's going to be a long fucking flight. Yeah, we're all Gen Pop. Yeah, we're all Gen Pop. Yours is seven and a half hour travel time. Ours is like five hours and 40 minutes. Right. But you get a first class fight and then you get to stop off, kind of like get the legs moving a little bit. And then you get back in to go to Vegas for the rest of the way for another first class fight. You get, you're well taken care of. Right. You know what I mean? Versus being crammed in a mill seat. You're talking middle seat and everything else. And I'm like, I think my guy's taking crazy pills, but you're like, hey, you know, fucking I'll be in the trenches with the boys type of yeah. thing, which I wasn't going to go against. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking in my head, like, I don't know if I would have took that one. I know. Well, but I, but also I stand by what I said. Like I would much rather just get there faster than have to yeah. stop in a whole bunch of spots, even if it's just one stop for me. And so I, I hit I hit up Caitlin. I said, "Hey, can you book me on the same flight as then?" She says, "Yeah, no problem." And uh, I go to check into my flight, and it's like you can't get your your seat yet because it's within 24 hours. And I was like, "All right, whatever." Gotta go to the desk. I sent it to Caitlin. I was like, "Hey, is this normal?" She's like, "Totally normal. It's because it's 24 hours, all that." So I like double checked and everything. The next day, we're up at I don't know. We leave at like five o'clock. My flight that I was going to have to get on, I'd have to be on that flight at five o'clock. So for me, I'm like, oh, I'm getting more sleep. Right, right. All that. There's a whole, right. there's a, there's enough pros. That I weigh the cons. Calling up the middle seat. Yeah. We get there. JFK, you got to work on your shit, dude. That is the, one of the worst airports I have ever been in my entire life. I go to stand in line. I'm looking at the thing. It says walk time. So I have my gate and walk, we're like gate B58 or something like that. And it says walk times like from B45 to B60. It says 30 minutes. And we're there earlier than we usually are for flights. We're there like an hour and a half. We were there like, yeah, we were there plenty of time. Yeah. So I end up getting the seat and Will goes, checks the kiosk for me. And he's like, hey, it's not working. I'm like, hey, you guys just go. You if get I'm, in line for the desk. We yeah. get in line for the kiosk because there were a lot of people. And the operation is just fucking brutal. The lines, god awful. The walk times, insane. Taylor's like, hey, because we got on the kiosk. I was like, well, let's try the kiosk because he's like, you guys just might need to start going. Like, it's a 30-minute walk. And he's like, I just don't know how long I'm going to be in this fucking line because it was long. Because I'm like, it's better for everybody. Right. Like, at least you guys to make the flight. Then all of us miss the flight. And it's right. like, what the fuck? Right. So I wait in this line. I'm a little tired. I'm sitting there and I'm watching people just fucking have conversations in this line. The people that are next in line. And the person sitting over there going, hey, next in line, next in line. And I'm looking at these other people and they're just like talking. I'm like, bro, hurry the fuck up. Yeah. In my head. But it's whatever. I end up getting to the desk. And the lady is like, oh, when, when's your birthday? And I was like, oh, 722-91. And she's like, oh, it says your birthday 722-2020. And I'm like. Birth year of 2020. I'm, I'm thinking, she goes, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 31. She goes, oh, it says here you're three. And I'm thinking, you could have probably figured it out that I'm not three years old. Yeah, but, I, but I whatever. 2020. We know there's a yeah, difference here. Yeah. Are you going to be able to fucking help yeah. me? So I'm like, hey, can you just change it real quick? She tries to change. She goes, oh, we can't print it here all this stuff, you're going to miss the flight because you're 45 minutes out. And so, so I sit there and I look at my phone real quick. There's 1110 flight. I go, hey, if I book this flight and I get through, can I make that thing? And they're like, uh, yeah, maybe. So I booked the 1110 flight direct from JFK to Vegas. I am sprinting. I am running. Taylor hits us and I'm, JP and I went to the security. Whenever Taylor was like, he wasn't even at the desk yet. JP and I just got through security. It, we were in security for a long time. Yeah. And then we had that 30 minute walk, bro. And it is the longest fucking walk. And Taylor's like, hey, I just got through security. And uh, I, I got, no, I was in line still. And I was like, hey, how, you guys there yet? Like, have you guys talked to the person? You're like, yeah. brother, we just got through. Yeah. And we were like, it's, it's a long, it's the longest walk of your fucking life. It's and I'm thinking not. there's no way Taylor's going to make it. So I get through, I end up getting through security and I have like, 15 minutes before this flight takes off. Did you I, run? You just ran the whole time? I ran the whole time. And I'm, brother. <laughs> oh, that, I can imagine. That shit all uh, hurt. Trust me, yeah. I was exhausted. I get there. The door is open. Before I can even get to the desk, the lady goes, hey, your friends were here. They said you'd be running, like, at the last second. Sorry, you missed it. And I'm like, we have a cutoff at 10 minutes before the flight takes off. I look at my, I look at my phone, dude. Eight minutes. Before the flight takes off. Schedule take off. Eight fucking minutes and the door is still open. I go, there's nothing you can do? She goes, no, sorry. And she literally walks away. Like, doesn't give there's me an opportunity. Plenty of time. Like, they, they would, didn't even close the overhead yet. Like, when JP and I are seated. And I'm like, yo, that's crazy. We're literally, like, I sat down just four minutes ago. Yeah. And the people still getting on the flight, apparently. Still working through everything before they even close the doors. No joke. I am fuming. I'm so fucking mad. So, I literally, I literally go in the corner and I set a timer on my phone for 20 minutes. I'm like, this is how long you get to be mad. And I literally was sitting in the corner so fucking mad that I like... Did you have your pouty face on? No, I was just... I just sat there and put headphones on and just listened to music for a little bit. And I, I literally felt like if somebody even... I, I would be the guy that like... Person in New York loses it and beats somebody up 
because the person asked how their day was going type thing. Like that would be a news article if someone was like, hey man, what's going on? Here, Luan says the N word. Can I get a, <laughs> <laughs> can, I get, can I get a photo? I, one of those things. Yeah. I'd be like, bro, I would fucking lose it right now. 20 minutes goes by, timer goes off. There's nothing I can do. Catch myself a, a little meal, walk around the place a little bit, get on my flight, middle seat on the 1110 flight. So five hours, bro. Five hours sitting five hours, there. 40 minutes. Watched two movies. I watched A Few Good Men. Watched, uh, what was the other one? It was another one with uh, Tom Cruise in it. Oh, Top Gun Maverick. And then I watched 30 minutes of Titanic. Yeah. And I skipped through it all good parts. A Few Good Men's a phenomenal movie. Phenomenal I watched movie. that too. Get there and it's great, dude. So now we're in Vegas. We go to Power Slap. Power Slap was great. It was a fun time. Before we hit Power Slap, should we hit this? Uh, oh, yeah. Hit an ad read? We hit this ad. What, we got some Duke Cannon dude? Yeah, some fucking not for clown shit. Go ahead. You want to go or you want me to go? This episode is brought to you by Duke Cannon. We'd like to talk to you about your shower game for a minute. Here's the facts, boys. The body wash you're using right now is weak, watered down, beta, and probably smells like a JV locker room. Simply put, you're a pussy. The boys need a shower of, sub of substance after a hard day's work, and that's why we use thick, high viscosity body wash from Duke Cannon. The thicker, the, gir the girthier, the better. Duke Cannon's thick body wash is built to work hard, not spew down the shower drain. All their scents are amazing, but my personal favorite is the Midnight Swim. It smells like a cannonball into a moonlit lake, not a dip in the hot tub at a starlit motel. Um, also, my personal favorite product, the face wash, the coal miner's face wash. That is my go-to. You have to try Duke Cannon. A limited time, we got the boys hooked up with 20% off your first order at DukeCannon.com with code THEBOYS20. That's 20% off when you use the boys 20 at DukeCannon.com. Duke Cannon, work harder, smell better. So we're finally in Vegas, dude. We hit Power Slap, and it was phenomenal. It, it, great was, time. it, it was a great time. But uh, Shane Gillis, who is a fucking, he's a stud. He's a bro. He's, he's, our, bro. Our, he's our bro, dude. He is all fucking time. He's like, hey, I have a show at the Mirage. You guys should come, blah, blah, blah. So we leave Power Slap the minute Wolverine takes the belt back to Missouri. <clears throat> we get on the bus, cruise over the Mirage. We get there probably an hour before the show starts. Shane's walking around with security. <laughs> Gets us into the, we go to like the little green room, which is essentially this 1970s style, like hotel suite. That's like right outside, like behind the kitchen of the Mirage of this coffee shop. We're hanging out there and uh, some cool cats, some cool fucking... Listen, let's, let's, let's be cool about it. Everyone just be cool for a second and relax. Everyone sitting, listening, watching this pod, be fucking cool when yeah. you say this. Don't overreact, dude. But. We hung out with Joe Rogan. Joe comes in. He's with young Jamie as well, who young Jamie's a homie. Homie, dude. He's a fucking homie. That was the best part because he's an Ohio State cat. Yeah. And once he was like, oh, I just shook the hand of a Michigan man. Like he feels dirty type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was like, oh, that's. He's one of the fucking boys. Yes. You can just tell he's one of the boys. So we talked to them for a little bit. Um, we, were we were hanging out. We fucking started talking Great about time. BPC, NAD, the whole, the whole thing. Jamie and I are going back and forth about. Hey, listen, if Ohio State keeps working hard, someday you guys will be back type thing. Yeah. And we ha we're having a good back and Hands forth. Hands are sweating the whole time. It's a, fun, it's a fun time. It's a great time. And we go behind the curtain before. And, what, and, what is that called? What we were asking uh, the, about God, the, the God mic or something like that. The God mic? Oh, there's a God mic. There's a single cool. mic with the curtains right before you walk out on stage. And Shane goes, all right, Will, you're doing it. And yeah. Will's like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, Shane's like, Will, come on, dude. Like, I want you to do the, the God mic. And I'm just thinking, fuck, what are we about to get into? He's like, oh, Will, I want you to do this. And I'm like, you actually want me to do something? He's like, yeah. Essentially, like, introduce the show. He's like, you know, say, like, Las Vegas. And it was, uh, I hate that I'm butchering and forgetting this comedian's name, but Sean something. I know, he had a, he had a, Tough. a, a long, a very many syllable last name. Yeah, I think it was yeah. three syllables. Yeah, started with a G. But, um, Jack, do you remember? Uh, I have to put you on the spot. Not Sean Patton. No, not Sean Patton. It's like, something dude's funny as hell yeah he was funny but anyway it's like you know basically like yeah las vegas are you ready type stuff and then our first comedian of the night's gonna be sean and i tell you what i am so fucking nervous to perform in front of the boys to perform in front of the boys you guys know yeah um cool. and so yeah be cool people and uh everybody's like dude you're gonna crush it man like all you gotta do just fucking do your thing so i grabbed Enthusiasm. the enthusiasm yeah 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 so i grabbed the mic and i'm like Las Vegas and you hear everybody going nuts behind the curtain and then I'm like uh, you know Shane's, Shane's fan base the dogs I'm like do we got any dogs in the house and you just hear the whole crowd just start barking they start, oh, 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 oh. They start barking on the mic Yeah, I'm like oh it's going to be a hell of a show our first comedian up 
uh, Sean, I introduced him. The crowd's going nuts, and I get done, and it felt like that uh, my pick six against Georgia 2012. We went up first quarter, and uh, dude, I like couldn't feel my body. It yeah. was such a cool. It was like peak fucking adrenaline. Yeah, I get done. I look at Taylor. We do a, like our half little handshake. I jump on him. We're fucking celebrating. I dap up Shane. I dap up Joe. He's like, you crushed it. I'm like, I know Joe. And we're just all getting hype. We'll be cool. Yeah, be cool, be cool. And uh, dude, it was just all time. Then we go and sit down out in the out in the crowd. Um, Tommy. Tommy Pope comes out. He crushes it. And then uh, Joe does a surprise uh, set for everybody there. Nobody knew that Joe was going to be there or performing or anything like that. Joe comes out and, dude, it was fucking pandemonium. Yeah, that's the perfect word, yeah, dude. Pandemonium. Yeah. People are up fucking punching the air, like just going nuts. Jack, Taylor and I look at each other. Jack and I look at each other. We're like, oh, this is sick. And uh, Joe goes for probably like 20 minutes, I'd Maybe, say. Yeah. 15, 20 also, minutes. Also, uh, Sean Gardini. Sean, Sean Gardini. Gardini. Shout out the Who's boy. No disrespect. Hey, he's a guy. He's a sit in the corner guy. Smoke a bunch of darts. Like very low he treated, key. He treated that seventies motel suite like a seventies. Yeah, motel yeah. Suite. He, he was, was ripping smoking, darts the whole time. No windows or nothing. Dude. Yeah, he was just yeah. Smoking cigarettes, getting yeah. after it. And uh, Joe crushes it, and then Shane comes out, and bro, Dog. Taylor and I are sitting there. We're watching Shane la belly laughing, dude. Like he's my favorite. Obviously, we're a, we're a little biased, but yeah. Shane is. The funniest cat doing it uh, right now, bro. Multiple times, Will and I look at each other and be like, Shane's the funniest guy on earth. <laughs> yeah. On fucking earth, dude. Like, hey, Shane, we need to clip this and so Shane can just see it. You're the best, dude. <laughs> Yo. you, you are the fucking best. You might be the goat, dude. Yeah, you... <laughs> you're fucking the goat, dude. He's talking about the, the fucking... Yeah. Middle East dudes blowing up a tank and getting surprised. Kangaroos fighting yeah. and shit. Like, Dog, dude, it's so, so funny. fucking funny. And Shane's also a dude that like, he loves being funny. And he he pretends like he hates the camera, but he fucking thrives. Thrives. And after we're going to Red Rocks to gamble and we're like, and we'll go, Shane, do Trump. And he just fucking <laughs> without being like, nah, man, I just starts these guys. He fucking starts killing it. You're dude. gay. Yeah. You're gay. He just starts doing his whole Trump <laughs> yeah. impression. Oh. It was bro. so fucking funny, dude. It was genuinely. I don't think I've laughed that hard in a long fucking time, dude. Legit, man. Legit. I, I just feel like we're, sort of, we're sitting there and we're watching Shane. And obviously, he's got his special out that he did in Austin on YouTube. Yeah. Because he was went through all the cancellation stuff by getting fired from SNL. And he uh, he did his special in Austin. And he's just been on the come up. And I I feel like we were getting, getting to sit there and watch him do stand-up and just watch his ascension. And one day, be known as in our generation as one of the best comics that did it. Yeah. So it's like really cool getting to like witness that because he is fucking hilarious. If you have a chance to go see Shane Gillis, you go see that motherfucker. You go dude. see him. It doesn't matter where you are. If you have to fly, train, bike, yeah. walk, dude, you go see him, dude. He is so fucking funny. Dude, he's and legitimately, like, like obviously, like uh, comedy is such a like, subjective art. Like it's either for you or it's for your, it's not for you. But like, right. there's no doubt in my mind, Shane is gonna own the twenties. Yeah, he's gonna own the twenties and possibly the thirties as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he's so. Know. He's so fucking funny, dude. And it's not like, it's not like, oh, he's funny on stage and he gets off and he walks off the stage and he's like, hey, you know, he's funny all of the time. Yeah, he makes making fun of everybody. He's literally, it's all of the time, dude. And so after the show, we go back, we're all hanging out and everyone's, and there's a bunch of people back there. Everyone's just having a good time and, and some beer chugs. Yeah. But this is when my anxiety starts happening because I know the boys got to go back to battle. I got to go fucking. Fight the good fight yet again. Yeah, because there's that after party for the power slaps yeah. back at Red Rocks. Yeah, and plus international yeah, was fight really was the late. next day. It was like yeah. 1230, 1245 at this point. And so we're like, Shane wanted to go. And there's a back and forth. Shane's like, I can't leave my boys. Well, I was like, dude, bring them. We have a bus. Like, just bring all the boys. We'll just go. Cause it's like, our party's like, can we get in? I was like, dude, yeah, you can just walk in. It's yeah, all good. It's like an after party. It's not like right. a, a, an inclusive, like yeah. only a few people are going to be there, which it wasn't. It was pretty packed. It was pretty that. packed, dude. Bree, uh, Bree Chandler and Michael Chandler are texting us, being like, hey, you need to come. Erica, who runs Power Slap, she's like, you need to get here. Dana's down. We need yeah. some good juju. And so we we end up, the whole crew ends up coming. Like, Shane's boys, Joe, I, did uh, Polly Shore go or no? No, Polly Shore no, didn't, Polly go. didn't go. Polly didn't go. We got, Jamie came, everybody, literally the whole crew, like, gets in the bus, or they, they take their rides, and we go to Red Rocks. And yeah. we all, like, walk in, walk in together, and it's like, there's the there's the high roller area and then the back is where like the two private rooms are is when we when we go gamble and then on one side the right side is usually where we're gambling we look and it's like litter dude like the Nelk boys are there there's this blonde dude who's apparently like this online gambler I don't know his name but I looked over and he had 
stacks and stacks and stacks of orange $5,000 chips. Like, I had no idea what he bought in for, but my God, was he murdering the fucking game. And then I see Dana, you, you know, when you do the credit line, you do an open credit line as you're gambling, there's little chips that come out and says 10,000. If you get past 10, they'll take the 10, those 10 chips away and they'll put 100,000 one down. Yeah. And then that motherfucker was riddled, dude. There's like a bunch of Skittles fell out of a bag. Like that's how many of those motherfuckers yeah. were out there. And um, Joe and I are talking and we're walking in. Joe's like, dude, the second we walk in there, Dana's going to grab me and talk to me about Power Slap. And I'm like, oh, there's no fucking doubt about it. And this man's at war. Like we're talking about half a million dollars right now that he's getting back and forth on. Joe goes and gives him a, a headlock. And uh, Dana's like, oh, what's up, dude? Daps him up. And they're talking. And he's like, let me talk to you for a second. Come over here. Come over here. And Joe's like, hey, Taylor's doing it. He's fucking doing it. Save me. And I'm thinking, brother, I'm not going to go tell Dana what to do. <laughs> like, you guys are going to have your conversation. Ten minutes go by. And there's another table that's all by itself. And I look over. I walk up. I'm like, hey, you ready to do this? And he's like, yeah, let's go. So we go to war. Like, everyone's still going. Dana's still got all his chips out. And I'm in the battle yet again, dude. And it was. It was probably the lo- one of the longer battles, Jack. Was that the 140 night? 140 was probably the longest, but yeah. that one, like that, that was the latest we'd ever started. Though, by too. far. So it kind of got a little hazy. Yeah. But yeah, for Dana especially, he was in the trenches when we got yeah. in the trenches, and I went down. I was, I was, I was, I was hopped up when we were at Red Rock. Yeah. Yeah. After, yeah, after I had to do those fucking chugs, mm. Shane's just like, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta do this." Yeah. It's like, God damn it, man. Yeah. But we go, I'm down like, I think, uh, 120 at one point yeah. where we're going back and forth. There's one point where Dana, if you're, the, the chips aren't, if it's not going well, he's, you start playing two hands. And at Red Rocks, I can play one hand of $30,000 or two hands of 25000 And I go, two hands, 25000 one of the hands turn into a split. And the other one was a double. And I win the double, but I lose both of the split. Taylor wins the double on that, just because uh, I know the story you're telling, just to preface. The hand that you won is the one right in front of you where we're standing. Right. The split and the double seemed like it was in front of Dana because he was messing with the chips. Yeah. And so I win one and then lose two. So I end up losing like 25 over like this hand that probably was a $100,000 hand. Like there was a 50000 here then a fifty with another double. So a seventy five, so $125,000 hand. And I win one, lose one. And, and Will's like, fuck yeah, Taylor, you did it. I'm like, man, shut the fuck up. We just lost again. He's like, no, man, what are you talking about? I go, Doug, you won. He goes, I just lost that other hand on the split. I go, yeah. oh, shit, I thought that was Dana's. You're like, no, he's just, he's just helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I lost that hand. I was like, oh, shit, yeah. yeah. But we end, up, we end up coming back to you and winning, I think, like 75, right? Yeah. And so, and then once that, like, uh, once that happened, then all the bros, we all just kind of sit down. We just gamble. Sit down, like, play. And that was fun, thousand, dude. Couple that was, thousand. Sit there and better a hundred, two hundred dollar hands. That's yeah. that photo where we're all sitting around. That's late as fuck at that point. That's like two thirty three o'clock now. So two thirty three o'clock in Vegas is five o'clock in New York. So Will and I have no, two. Yeah, three, three o'clock, o'clock is, is five. Six o'clock in New York. It's three hours difference. Yeah, three hours. We're at Central Time's two. So we're hours at twenty five hours being up straight. Yeah. And so I, like after shortly after this picture was taken, boys are like, hey. Let's go. I'm sitting there. I'm probably literally scheming like how in the hell do I either lose it all or walk away and just yeah. go upstairs and go to bed. No doubt. And so we end up. Jack, you ended up winning some cash. I know Jamie did well when we were sitting down there winning this hand or winning. Um, did you do well right there when you were just sitting down no, playing? I, I just had a couple thousand out and I've yeah. been a little ridiculous. We were just hanging though. That was like one of the hang just play blackjack. Which but. is the most fun, dude. Like when you go do the stressful thing, it's great because if you win, obviously you win a lot of money, but sitting down with five of your buddies and just playing whatever happens, yeah. happens. But like conversations are going on camaraderie. Someone has an ace put down first. Like, oh, let's fucking go, buddy. Yeah. And then you get a three on top of it. And you're like, oh, fuck, that sucks. <laughs> but it's like, a, it's a good time, dude. So we end up going to bed, waking up at like 9.30. So we're hitting there probably four o'clock, go to bed, wake up at nine, nine thirty. We hit the, you know, we hit breakfast or we hit brunch, whatever. And then we go out to the pool, win some money at the pool, at, yeah. the, at the blackjack at the pool. Yeah, that was And fun. then we get to go to a UFC 290, which two, oh. UFC 290, dude. That was bucket list. Like, I, I remember I've told Taylor before, I'm like, dude, it, you get to sit like in Vegas at a UFC fight, get close to the action because to you had went to the Diaz McGregor and I was like, man, that is so fucking sick. Yeah, I was back in like 16, but I was up in the nosebleed with yeah, the incognito yeah. and Taylor. Bro, when we were in this second row down here on the floor, dude, like it was insane. Bro, the most insane shit is you go and sit down that row and it's taped off with, your, with names on it. And like literally one will say, Will Compton, another one will say Taylor Lewan, and the one next to it will say Mark Wahlberg. It's all right. I mean, it was under your name, so both were Taylor Lewan. You well, got you Taylor Lewan, Taylor. Oh, yeah, yeah, for all sure. Moved by Taylor, though, right there. 
I was, what? I was a homie play. Thank you, like thank you, he brother. Said like, it a, he said it a couple times. I think one time he said it to me. It was just me and him talking. I'm just like, hey, it's like, it's all, it's all. Soft. But you know, you. But anyway, like you're sitting there, dude. It's like, bro. Obviously, 45 is sitting right at the front with Dana. Like in that, we'll get into that in a second. But then, like right in front of us, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg. is sitting. But then, uh, and his crew is sitting right next, right next to us, one row behind. Right in front of me to the left, dude, is my king, Johnny Knoxville. Sits down with his wife. Next to him is Theo, which I think we can talk about. The beef is squashed. Maybe. I mean, he, he needs to come on the pod. You're right. You're right. Him and then like Miles David Teller. Spade. Miles Teller. Yeah, yeah, Miles Teller. Mel Gibson. It's just nuts, dude. And it's like we have the crew. Obviously, the Nug Boys are there too right next to Shane, us. Like, I mean, Shane's, he's he's down the way. But yeah, he's Shane's like, there. David he's like right behind. David Goggins. Yeah, he's behind Joe and co the co uh, DC, Daniel Cormier. He's behind the commentators. Yeah, David fucking Goggins. It, it was, was nuts, dude. It was it insane. Was, dude. It was nuts, dude. I was it just was... looking around. There were several moments. Ted and I are just looking. And we're just like, yo, how in the fuck are we here, man? It's one of those things where you don't even like talk. You just kind of look and go, this is crazy. Yeah. You go back to just being in the moment of everything that's going on. Yes, bro. Luckily, dude, Jack and JP are there to capture moments because Will and I are just kind of sitting there like, holy fuck, this is so cool to be a part of. At that close of those fights and all the fights were fucking yeah, amazing, dude. Incredible card. It was so much fun. And so we're sitting there and uh obviously Knoxville's there and Will's like, I gotta get you a photo with him. I got you a photo. I'm like, no, dude, just let him fucking do. <laughs> I was like, there was bro. a couple comments like Theo would lean back and say something to me, and then I'd make a comment back. And there was one time I made a comment and I saw Knoxville laugh at the comment. I thought, I've done everything. What was the comment? I can't remember. It was like uh Theo said something, and then I said, like, oh, we were talking about getting hit, hit in the dick. And then waiting this long, like, all this whole crowd just waiting for your penis to feel better. And then we talked about, uh, it'd be better to have a small dick in this situation and then having a big dick. Like, a big dick's just a bigger target. Anyway, I said something about a big dick. And Knoxville, hit, a, Knoxville hit like a, you could see him laughing, like, yes, yes. Dude. I know, I was trying to get, uh, I wasn't trying to, but I told Taylor, I'm like, by the end of this, because he left early, Johnny left early before the main event. I was like, at the end of this, like, I'm getting you a photo. I don't give a shit. I'm letting you know right now. I'm going to go over to John. And I'm like, hey, my boy behind you, he is such a massive fan. A little shy, a little nervous. He didn't want to ask. <laughs> but it, he would, it would be unreal if you guys got a photo together. But he did end up leaving early. By the way, his skin, his, his skin is phenomenal. He really keeps up well with his face. Yeah, phenomenal skin. Yeah. But at one point, dude, um, okay, here, here's, here's what I'll say about a president of the United States. You're, you're, you're just addressing. I'm addressing it. Because it will hit, one thing I'm proud of is our, our comment section is pretty even of Democrats and Republicans. Oh, you were, uh, yeah, I, I remember JP being like, hey, the comment section's pretty fucking all over the place. It's yeah. just like, you know that's going to happen. You know that's going to happen. Yeah. But I've also had people that are Democrat reach out to me and be like, yo, what the fuck? And I'm like, here's the deal. If there's a president of the United States, regardless if he's a Republican or Democrat, like, if there's a president, you have the opportunity to shake their hand at one point or is now the leader of the free world, you get a photo, like, that's cool. It doesn't matter who, who they are. One thousand percent. I mean, it's fucking, it, it's, Donald Trump's literally sitting no farther than 10 feet away from us the entire fight. And he's yeah. nice to everybody coming up to him. And I look over to Taylor, I'm like, hey, because Dana, he's sitting next to Dana the whole time because they're obviously boys. And um, I look over to Taylor, I'm like, yo, like, we got to get a photo. We got to get a photo. Absolutely. So I had Dana, but I was like, hey, can we get a photo with you in 45? And he texts back, absolutely. Yeah. So right before the main card comes out, Dana's like, hey, come on. Well, even before that, Dana's like introduces me and Will to Trump. And uh, we shake his hand, dude. And in true Trump fashion, he goes, a couple of big, strong men. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah a couple, couple of couple strong, good-looking men. A couple of strong, good-looking men to us. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> that's and exactly then, and then he the starts fucking thing you want to hear. Fist yeah. Uh, yes, oh, dude. fuck, bro. So funny. And then we take that photo. And he looks at me and he goes, you're doing great. <laughs> I'm thinking, bro, you, don't know you have no doing. idea how I'm doing. But that's so fucking funny you just yeah. say that shit. And he just is exactly what you've seen him as with all his lines and stuff like that. Like, it was it was a phenomenal experience. Yeah, that was, was uh, the only one I was intimidated to get a picture for, like, to ask. Like, because uh, obviously we shook Trump's hand and I'm thinking, like, yo, we, like, let's just take a photo. Like, I'm sure yeah. it feels kind of weird, but everybody was coming up to him and, all the all the like celebs, the movie stars and stuff like that, like everybody's being super friendly. So you didn't feel you didn't feel dumb being like, yo, let's get a photo. Yeah. But the only one I was intimidated by, which Jack and JP did, was David Goggins. I saw him and I'm like, 
you know he probably just doesn't want to be fucking bothered whatsoever. Right. He's thinking about running right now. Yeah, he like, just he's upset he's sitting. Hard. Yeah, he, yeah, he wants to just stay hard as fuck. He just loves watching the guys in the octagon. You know he doesn't want to take photos. Yeah. But he was probably the only one I was like, like I'll just let him just do his thing. Yeah, that's wanna, how it was with Johnny. I want to appreciate from yeah. far that David Goggins is in the building. Yeah, dude. That was a cool, it was just an unbelievably cool experience. All around awesome time. And then like getting to meet David Spade, Joe Dirt. Like he, that's when he walked by and I was like, hey man, I just want to say like I've been a massive fan of you forever. He's like, oh, good to see you, man. I'm just thinking, like, you have no clue who I am, but mm. I'm just being a fan. But I was just like, man, you're just, I just wanted to say, like, I've been a big fan of all yeah. your stuff, bro. But one person that did recognize us, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Like, he came and sat down. He got there a little after the main the main card started, and he was turning the corner. He's like, oh, what's up, dude? How, we, how, we, how are you guys doing? Yeah, and we're like, oh, yeah. Gave me a little bit longer look. I got you, the motherfucker, dude. That bodied him. <laughs> oh, bodied you're, him. Oh, you're in Transformers? Yeah. Oh, you're in Transformers? But yeah, it was fun, dude. A couple of cameras came by. Obviously, me and Will are being stupid as fuck in the background of those. Yeah, photos. I mean, those are the ops, man. Those, those are the yeah. ops. Like, we knew we were sitting behind. Like, Trump was obviously in front of Wahlberg. Wahlberg sitting in front of us. They're even showing Max because Max is the guy for the Raiders. So you're like, oh, man, there's going to be so many opportunities just to sneak a little photo bomb in there. Something yeah, right get, there. Him, get in the camera. Get yeah. in some camera action. Someday, dude. Someday we'll be highlighted. But for <laughs> yeah, right. now, that, that's our moment. Yeah. That's our moment behind the I scenes. I saw some, uh, I don't know what account it was, but they were showing all the the big celebrities and stuff there, and you guys made it in there. No way. Swear to God. Be cool. Be cool about it. Be cool, be cool, be cool. So overall, a great experience, dude. We go back to Gamble at Red Rocks, and, you know, Dana hit me up the next day saying, hey, man, I passed out my bed, which is fun. But we did, I did keep everybody up a long time to go gamble, and then ended up <laughs> Irish goodbying everyone, too. <laughs> so. Yeah. I'm just glad you said it. It's all, that's. That's all you needed. me what it is, Yeah. I did when it was the, it was when it was the what you do the Irish goodbyes all this I'm just thinking that's not that's not the deal that's not what I'm trying to hear right yeah. now dude it's okay when Will it does wasn't it, like not just, when I do it <laughs> no all right I get it there's a double standard in our relationship you understand you do understand the situation yeah. or no 100 percent 100 percent understand it do you want me to explain it so you feel better no no I just don't know if you're you're hitting me with the jokes I'm thinking no bro I understand when I did that I literally like. Once you text me, oh, I can't believe you did that. I'm thinking, all right. I literally got my key card and I, I was going to walk back downstairs. Because you faced, I was like, oh, no, we're going back up. Yeah. And I was like, right, I'm coming back down right now. I hit uh, Shane the next day. I was like, hey, how was Jack Harlow? No response. I was like, probably still sleeping. Probably, dude. He went to Harlow at 2 a.m. Yeah. Like, he didn't go on until 2.30. Yeah. So, yeah, we're literally at the airport being like, he's, they're probably still at the concert. Yeah. And it's like, dude, and that flight. It was miserable. Wasn't as bad for myself. Like I felt like I got in a good a good few hours because I taped the mouth shut. I had the sleep mask. I had the A one. I had the emergency exit with all the leg room. My boy, my my six foot one buddy over here took the all the leg room. I was hot, but like it was because I was so overtired. Like I was mad at everything. No at question. Point. We're we're all everybody's on it. Everybody's yeah. ready just for an on edge. Like moment. low key, I wanted that seat so bad. And when he took it, there was a a piece of me that felt stolen. Like <laughs> that shit was stolen from me. But when I go. Me the look across the other yeah. side. And I'm just thinking. I just thought uh, it is. What I it have is, a one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I go and sit in the seat on the other aisle, and I had plenty of room. Like, I could extend my legs all the way. Like I was perfectly comfortable. I was like, all right, this is. That's where you sit there and go. Yeah, you're just tired. Cause, yeah, because when we were going back and forth, that's why I was, tr I was trying to sell you. I was trying to sell you on that. I was like, dude, I swear the other side because which you would say is true now. Yeah. Yeah. I was like the one with the exit row and all the extra leg room. That same row, it's more of like a regular, closer to a regular seat than like an extra legroom emergency row. <laughs> but, I was like, on the other side, when they go threes, mm -hmm. you're going to get more legroom over there. The shitty part is we just don't get to sit by each other. Yeah, but I will say, I think I like that seat better. Really thinking about it, because the exit row that you have, there's no seat in front of you. The two like things, you can't move up and like kind of get out of the way. This one, that far one, you have just as much legroom, but you can't, like you can move the little what do you armrest, mean you get armrest. Up. You know the oh, little armrest? You can put them up? You can put them up. And so I, I look, he was like, this might be my new move, honestly, if I can pull this one off. It was nice. It was a nice little deal. That's a massive win in the, yeah. amidst adversity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, but was there anything? Oh, the flight, dude, back. Obviously, it's a 5 a.m. flight. So all the windows are up. My window, I, I tried to put it up. The two inches oh, I was behind you. I was about that. The light like, coming in? The, I, I put it up and then I let go and it would go, and there'd be this much room. 
And for whatever reason, like it kept me up a little bit more than I wanted to. Your eyes are closed, but you're just thinking about yeah. the window being down, so you can't actually calm down. Yeah, and no, the, I, I could. I could they, obviously, when I close my eyes now, it's like a little more red because there's so much light. And it was like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would, I at one point, close my eyes, grabbed it, and lifted it up, and it was all dark. And I was like, "This motherfucker, this fucking little thing right here, it was broken." I was mad about that too. So it was it is a, what it is. Yeah, dude. yeah, I mean, it was bad. We're going at on. that point, two, dude. Two seventy-two hours, we were going hours. On a two hour nap. Two hours and what five plus two, so seven hours of sleep. Just tough, dude. Fucking tough. All, all, all together. Slept fourteen hours. Overall, four point five, I'd say. No question. That's I think a four point five trip if I've ever seen one. Yeah, that's four point five for sure. Should we we're an hour in, dude? Should we do shout out no free shout out and pet peeve of the week? I got mine. Yeah. All right. You wanna go first or second? Um, what are you doing, pet peeve or shout out? All my list pulled up right now. Shout out, no free shout out. My shout out, no free shout out is going to go to good neighbors. You just can't beat having good neighbors. We're gone and we need something, whether it's the trash to be taken out or, hey, the delivery happened, you mind going to grab it and holding on to it. We have a good set of neighbors. I won't say their names because I don't know if they want to be, I don't know if they want to be said. They want their names to be said, but we have some fucking phenomenal neighbors across the street. And uh, that's my shout out, dude. I just feel like you have good neighbors. You're like, it makes life, it makes your house that much better because you know you're taken care of. That's a great shout out, no free shout out. My shout out, no free shout out goes to when you're driving a vehicle on the highway during a big rainstorm and you get that split second of peace when you go over, go under a bridge. Oh, oh, it's like, <laughs> that is the moment where you're kind of like regaining yourself and being able to be like, all right, we're, we, we're safe. Cause there, there are all those rainfalls where you're like, holy fuck, dude, it's really coming down. Yeah. I, you gotta think to yourself, I'm being extra safe right now with the way I'm driving. And that little moment of peace of driving under a bridge. That's my shout out. No free shout out. Mm, that's good. That was a good one. Thanks brother. Good one. Thank you. I actually got that from somebody on Twitter. Somebody commented or DM me that. I was like, oh, I'm gonna keep, that's a fucking good one. So shout out to the individual that DM me. I don't remember your name. It's almost better to just be like, oh, yeah, I guess that's fair. It'd almost be better to say the name if you, like, remember it. So it'd be like, hey, I'm using this. Mm -hmm. Or just don't say their name at all. Just act yeah, like Yeah, and just yours. take all the credit. Yeah. Um, that's not me, bro. That's not me. <laughs> no, I'm fucking, I'll have my people's back. Um, do you guys want to do one in the back there? You just want to go straight to Pet Peeve? I've got one. All right, go ahead. And it pertains to this weekend, but uh, I'm shouting out to accessible transportation. And when I say that, I mean shout out to our boy John at the Red Rock. Hell yeah. Mm. There's no better feeling than being at any event, especially when we're in Vegas when it's so chaotic, there's so much traffic and things going on that when we need to leave a place and be somewhere in 20 minutes, we walk out of a building and there's a vehicle waiting to take us to wherever we want to be. It makes you feel really important and it also just like alleviates a lot of sh unneeded stress. And you like, and we're always in some like really nice Escalade or like a 20 person passenger van for four people. So shout out to our boy, John, the Red Rock and, and really accessible. And not just a vehicle sitting out there, but Johnny with high vibes. Oh, Johnny with great, high dude. vibes, He's good like, energy. How's it going, boys? Yeah. All fun. He's like, you see that fight? And you're like, yeah. John, come hang out with us. Yeah, and he did. He did. He did come and hang out for a little bit. He I did. love John. He's the oh. best. He'll hit me up. He'll randomly text me like on a Wednesday and be like, bro, I hope you're doing great. I hope you're having a great day. And then gives me one of these. I'm yeah. Like, fuck yeah, dude. You're the best. I fuck with John so heavy, man. He's like, it's awesome. All those people do the, the um, customer service at Red Rocks is just stupid. It's like, I, I can't even, I've never experienced anything like that. They take good care of you. That's yeah. for sure. I've been to five-star places. I've been there. I've seen the areas. And I don't think I've ever gotten taken care of like I do at Red Rocks. They have, yeah. they have great customer service. That of like yeah. a Chick-fil-A or a, an In-N-Out. Thanks, brother. Establishment. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I, will, I also want to give a shout out to Joe as well. Joe, who always hooks us up, always there, walks us up to the room. He's, he's incredible. Sleek, bald head, great beard. Yeah, handsome individual. Yeah. Great beard. So shout out to him too. Obviously, Blair and Sean as well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Onward. Uh, pet peeve. My pet peeve of the week is going to be not putting away your bin at the airport. I hate when the belt or whatever starts to get crammed and people just grab their stuff and they go and they don't put away their bin. They don't stack them. I'll sit there and stack them because it just, for whatever reason, it bothers me. It's almost like people who don't like clean up the rim of a toilet seat or something like that. Yeah. Like, I just hate when we're putting away your shopping cart. Like when it's just out in the middle somewhere, people like leave their shopping cart. Like just fucking put your shit away. And security, like 
you know, it gets backed up enough at times. Not that we were in a, any really any of those situations, but you want to keep that thing flowing smooth. And to do so, we also have to do our part as gym pop, as the pedestrian, to make sure we keep everything organized and flowing smoothly for our for the common man behind us ready to go and get on their flight. Yeah. Somebody could be running behind and you're cramming it up with not stacking your bins and then it gets all the way up there. People got to hang on a second. You know, you do it, but I digress. Pet peeve of the week, not putting away your bins at the airport. Now there is, <clears throat> there is a couple of places you go to. I believe uh, LaGuardia might be one where there's a sign specifically that says do not stack bins. Yeah, I mean, if it's like set on a sign, but most yeah. spots you're going to, 100%. you're lining 100%. those things up so you can get them down. So, because if you don't, people aren't going to sit there and stand in front of the empty bin. They're, everybody's going to start stacking in behind each other and say, you're behind me and you see your bin come out because maybe mine got got and I didn't see it. I'm standing there. So you got to like reach over me and get, oh, excuse me, I'm just going to get my stuff. And then maybe the other person's right behind it and everybody's just right there on top of each yeah. other. Yeah. It's just like, yo, take your bin so everybody can kind of weight down the belt line themselves for their own bin. Oh, that's mine? Slide it down a little faster. Right. Help everybody out, man. That's what I'm about at the yeah. fucking airport. One thing you brought up, too, about the, the shopping cart. Like, that takes an extra effort, especially if you're not near the, the cart thing. But that is a needed thing in the society we need right no now. No doubt. You need to take that extra effort to put that, that grocery cart away. And listen, I'm, I'm the one of the, the laziest people that I know. That's why I park right next to the fucking shopping Which cart Which is a thing. ballsy move. Which, that, and everybody says that. Like, oh, it could get hit. It could get this. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, if I'm pushing the, the fucking uh, shopping cart out, I want to put my shit away and I want to put that that uh, shopping cart right right next to the truck. There is a, a level of being like, fuck, man. When you see you're in an empty parking lot with a shopping cart, and you're like, I could just leave this motherfucker here. But Yeah, but I, I, I like the to effort. play the game of like, I, you know, Get it and push and see yeah. if I can get it in. And then oh, if, yeah. if it curves off to the side, like, man, I just need a little bit more mm. of the right angle. And then I'll just go push. You got another cart. My pet peeve of the week is going to go to paper straws. Mm. That shit, dude. Yes, sir. You fucking, you, if I, I, black ice coffee, that's what I drink, dude, in the mornings, especially. If you put a paper straw in my shit, I, I gotta, I am thinking to myself, I gotta chug this coffee. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in hell in the next three minutes. It's so soggy. You can barely get the juice out. You're sucking the shit out of the thing. No pause. And it's just like, whole. it's like, what are we, like, what are we doing? What happened to save paper, use plastic? And I get it. Plastic's not good. We saw one turtle with something up its nose once. We're like, this can't happen ever again. But I thought it slipped to the save uh, plastic use paper. Maybe I'm But off. it was. I think it was in the back in the day. I think it was maybe before you were born, Mitch. I think before I was a young lad, I would say save paper, use plastic. I don't know. <laughs> I might have to get fact checked. Back when our on grandparents that. were young. Yeah. I, they were big on using plastic then. <laughs> but there's a lot of other things you do. Hemp. Hemp. You can make straws out of hemp. Do that. Because when you mentioned the paper straws, like, dude, I'm fucking with you. Like, we need more plastic. And you're like, relax, brother. You're like, <laughs> you're like, you're like, hemp can get the job done too. Yeah. I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah. 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 Missouri just popping out. <laughs> you're fucking right. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a fucking, it's annoying. It's so annoying. Because especially if it's, a drink like a coffee where you kind of want to sip it. You don't want to drink it too fast. It's like, dude, I can't be having this paper in my life like that. It's soggy too. And then soggy ugh. paper. It's just tough. So that's my, that's my pet peeve of the week. Boys, you have any pet peeves out there you want to say? I got one. Go I'll do one. Uh, my pet peeve of the week is it, it typically only happens when you're eating like a hot dog or hamburger, but it's when like your ketchup or mustard gets down to the end and like you're, you're trying to squeeze, obviously like squeeze it out and then it just, fucking splatters everywhere mm. then it just gets on you like all over your plate all over your other clothes or other, your other food and it just you're like what the fuck it just pisses you off really quick and now you have shit everywhere all over your plate so my pet peeve is when those uh, your condiment bottles just squirt everywhere I'm with that that's why you gotta yeah. fucking take that motherfucker and if you're stabbing somebody just throw that thing yeah. down try to get at the edge but it still does it even if it's especially if it's light yeah Especially for the rookie move too, like a rookie move is when you take a uh, like a, a squirt bottle of ketchup and you just quickly turn it down and squeeze it. And it's like half full, and you get that water ketchup. <sighs> that shit is fucking that rough. Happened, that happened to me a few days ago. Did yes. it? Yeah. But it's a it's, you literally sit there and like you get mad at the situation, then you realize like I have no one to blame but myself. No, no doubt. Because you no know doubt. you can just kind of put your finger on the tip, give it a quick shake, and you'll never have to deal with that little weird water. That shit does fuck up a day. Mm. It fucks up a day. Uh, before we get into Kelsey, is there anything you want to ask us, Jack? Yeah, uh, we have a twisted question of the week, mm. and um, is there anything that we have to preface saying it? Like, yeah, well, there's an ad. If y'all want to go ahead and rip that to introduce line for line, 
Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. This it, would this be what it is? Are you sure that this one, like this, la this yeah. question is going to be the twisted this question? Segment sponsor. Gotcha. Is that. All right, keep it twisted this summer with Twisted Tea. It tastes like real iced tea because it's made with real brewed tea, meaning it is absolutely fucking delicious. Real brewed tea with a kick, 5% ABV. Full ABV. of flavor and very refreshing. Twisted Tea turns up the heat at any occasion, making it the perfect product for any summer occasion. Daytime, nighttime, outdoors, poolside, in bed, doesn't matter. Goes down smooth. There is no carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long and not to mention football season but it's the best product to sip on while watching your favorite team twisted tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day twisted tea is the perfect alcohol beverage for game day whether tailgating in the parking lot watching at a bar or watching with your boys at home twisted tea is there to turn up your game day keep it twisted grab a refreshing twisted tea today okay so for our twisted question Going along with uh, Vegas, we are going to do Fuck, Mary Kill with some of the biggest celebrity names we saw this weekend. Um, we could have done the same three for both of y'all, but we're going to do individual that kind of tailors to y'all's taste. Okay. So, Will, we're going to start with you. Fuck, Mary Kill, David Goggins, Joe Rogan, and Miles Teller. That's a good one. Now, we talking like Fuck, Mary Kill, legit? <laughs> We talking yeah. sharing a life? Oh yeah, sharing a life. And if we get divorced, I get fifty. <laughs> uh, you'll probably sign a prenup, homie. You'll probably have to sign a prenup. Maybe one might have to sign a prenup. Depends what that mouth do. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how that throat works before. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah, I yeah. talk them out of the prenup. No doubt. You don't want to do that, do you? Huh? You don't want a prenup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like going in with your fingers crossed, right? Like, we shouldn't do that. We should yeah. do this thing for real. Right. Mary, fuck, kill. You said Rogan, Goggins, Teller. Correct. That's an easy one for me. Yeah, I'm going to marry Rogan. 1,000% I'm marrying Rogan. Just fucking, yeah. The other one's a little, you think it's easy? Yeah. For me, when I think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you marry Rogan just because nobody really knows of of all the uh, the big account. Not that I'm a gold digger, but he does very well. And we'll just take some like horse dewormer and some fucking peptides for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna fuck Teller. He's a good looking cat. You wish he had a little bit more of a strong jawline. Maybe he could start taping his mouth shut when he sleeps at night. It might help open up the nasal breathing a little bit to help adopt and develop a stronger jaw. But I'm going to go with Miles Teller because he looked phenomenal in uh, Top Gun Maverick. Especially when he got sweaty and he's playing out on the beach with the boys and they're mm. all kind of like shredded up and you're like, oh, I got to go. I got to hit me a set right now. And then I'm going to kill David Goggins. For sure. You don't want nobody yelling at you. I think he's he's been divorced a few times, but yeah. you could just imagine saying like, who's going to use the rest of the toothpaste? Yeah. Brother, take it easy. Like it's pretty much empty. Yeah. You kill Goggins, too. You're probably free to move about any part of the world, too. Like you go to those troubled countries. Yeah. You know, that America's fighting. They're like, oh, this guy's killed one of them. You know? Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And you just don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and he's screaming, like, yeah. the same thing. Who's going to carry the boats? And it's just like, sweetheart, you're, 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 having, a, sweetheart. you're having a night terror. You're having a night terror. Yeah. Oh. Can I do Wills? You can. All right. I would marry Teller, fuck Rogan, kill Goggins. Okay. Why is that? Um, Rogan seems busy. I don't know if he'd give me the time I need. Teller's more handsome cat. We both have resistance. So I feel like... You guys travel. He seems to travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, I feel like... Um, I, yeah, I think I would go there. Rogan, I'd probably fuck Rogan and be like, if you don't pay me, I'm going to tell Will because you guys are married. I'm trying <laughs> to get that fucking cat. Yeah, like Rogan, it's almost... That's beneficial. Like he's got to work all the time. So you'll yeah. get your... Uh, I'll get my free time. I'll get my yeah. hang out with the boys, Fair hang enough. out with the bros. So that's probably that would, what I would do for those three. But Just for fun, let's do your list, and then, Will, you can follow up okay. as well. Uh, so for the following, Shane Gillis, Johnny Knoxville, Mark Wahlberg. Wow. I'm not trying to fuck Shane. <laughs> Nobody. Like, look at that. <laughs> Shane's got that. Uh, yeah, he's got that. 
He's got that body too that just doesn't see any daylight no, any dude. day of the week. So yeah. he bruises easy. You pat him on the back, dude, and he's a welt for a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna turn all the shades of colors. Yeah. Yellow right before he gets back to that skin tone. Give me those names again. Shane Gillis, Johnny Knoxville, Mark Wahlberg. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill Wahlberg. What? And this is where I kind of run into a struggle. Because if it's just the boys hanging out, and we're just like married, we just kind of sleep in the, as long as we're moving to my house and not Shane's, I'd probably marry Shane. <laughs> I'm fucking Knoxville. Because Shane's a homie. And if you just chill, it's like, you know, the whole sex thing would be tough for two reasons. I'm not gay. And what we, we talked about with Shane. Let me switch it. I think that's what your list is. Yeah, Knox was kind of old. Marry the marry the dog. Yeah, man. I'm gonna marry a dog. I'm gonna marry the dog. I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck Knoxville and I'm gonna kill Wahlberg. You know? I feel like, like it kind of goes into well, your things with Goggins. Like Wahlberg got a crazy schedule too. He's up at three. I like my sleep. I don't wanna It's all right. Just tell him not to wake you up. He will. He will. He gets up like he's 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 got that soft spot. Wahlberg's at the age where he gets out of bed and goes. Uh, and makes all the fucking noises the whole time. He probably turns on some motivational music. He's probably got some Bible on tape that he listens to while he brushes his teeth. Like, there's a lot of shit that I'd be woken up by. Mm. So that's probably where I'd... And then if you get to chill with the dog, you know, we'd probably have to put in a couple of rules about the bedroom and putting pillows up and stuff like that. But yeah, I think we'd be all right. I think that's... I, th I like that list. I'm going to go... Uh, I'm killing Shane because... He dodged him downs. Like, you know, he's got that chromosome in there to where you can't really procreate with him. So I, I don't think I'd want to reproduce with Shane. I'm going to fuck Johnny Knoxville, Silver Fox, great skin. You know, he's a great time. Jackass, all the stuff he's done. You know, he's probably great in bed. And then I'm going to marry Wahlberg. Those who pray together, stay together. And I think Mark and I, would we would have a, a very- while you're married, Mark Wahlberg. A very fruitful life together. The, what I found out in this marry, fuck, kill is Will is a gold digger. <laughs> like, do you marry Wahlberg for the money? No, I was marrying. Well, I was just marrying Wahlberg because I wanted to say those who pray together stay together. Oh, just because you wanted to say that. Yeah. Rogan, it's like you know, it's that's such an obvious marriage there. You know what I mean? Podcasters, Rogan, comedians, yeah, jacked. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Questioning everything. Yeah, you're doing shrooms and getting high with Rogan. Like you're about to have a great time. Late at night, whatever it is, laughing at whatever, going down whatever conspiracy wormhole that may be on YouTube. Check this out. Check this out. We're having a fucking awesome time. Mm. Outside of the 50 split, if he ever wants to divorce me, I got to fucking take him to court. Yeah. All right. We get into the Kelsey podcast. You guys are going to enjoy this one, man. Obviously, Kelsey's had a, um, a massive year. He won the Super Bowl. Hosted SNL. We get into that. He started a podcast right before the season. Literally the... Smartest time you could possibly start a podcast. Him and his brother making it to the Super Bowl. People are literally calling it the Kelsey Bowl. Incredible dude. Obviously, we talk about playing with Pat, Kansas City Barbecue. He was in town for tight end U. So we get into our tier talk, which happens to be the best tight end quarterback duos. A great, a great pod. A fun pod. We had a twisted question with him that I think we did a good job with. Mm. And, and so you guys are in for an absolute treat. Thank you for sticking with us, dude. Thank you for sticking with us. Like how long we, we've been going? About an hour. So those who stay, those tier ones, we appreciate it. Tier ones are all about it. It's the yeah. news, the Kansas City faithful. It's been like, why are we listening to these cocksuckers for yeah. over an hour before? Especially having to listen to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I'm a very big rival to Kansas City, Kansas City fans. But if you're here and you've loved it, make sure to subscribe to the boys. We're always, this bus needs to get bigger, dude. Yeah. But before we get into the Kelsey episode, this podcast is brought to you by Bolero. The world's largest owner and operator of bowling centers all around with over 325 locations throughout the United States, currently located in 34 states. Oh, I'm not, all right. Bolero is known for reinventing one of America's oldest pastimes into a new and unforgettable experience with modern and beautifully designed venues, expansive arcades, premium signature cocktails, and a creative menu. Now... We're here to introduce the Barstool Bolero Invitational. Listen up, boys. It's this summer's most anticipated event. Mm. Joining the Invitational is easy. Simply enter your name and, vi 
and visit any Bolero near you and bowl for your chance to be entered to win one of our ultimate prizes, including limited edition Barstool Bowling gear, an event at any Bolero, and the ultimate grand prize, which includes tickets to the Super Bowl and NBA Finals, plus a trip to Barstool Bolero Invitational Finale in Chicago on August 9th. The fun doesn't stop here. Enjoy a guaranteed spot on the lanes when you reserve a lane or book an event at bol- at a bolo at a Bolero near you. Visit Bolero.com. Use promo code Barstool for 15% off your next lane reservation. This offer is only valid through August 31st. Visit www.bolero.com forward slash Barstool to learn more about the Barstool Bolero Invitational starting July 12th. Participation is open until July 23rd. Zero skill required. All participants have an equal chance of winning. To find any to find a participating center near you, visit www.bolero.com forward slash barstool. Enjoy Travis Kelsey. How the boys been, man? Dude, living the dream. Out here grinding. Grinding it out. You know what it's like, podcast life. Banking these things or what? This week for sure. Yeah, we get some of you and all that. Hell yeah. So we got you guys in town. We'll get the backlog of you. You know the, you know, you know the grind a little bit now. It's, it's dog. It is a grind at that, especially after the season. I was like, holy shit! I didn't know I was gonna get myself into all this. Oh, so, is there like a lot of deliverables you guys had to hit? No, I was just, I was only thinking it was gonna be like the season, and then it ended up being what it was because we had blew the fuck up the Super Bowl, and dude, people were just keep asking for it. I'm just like, I mean, if you look at a timeline go? of when you guys decided to make that, there's not a better fucking timeline, dude. It uh, possibly pick. the greatest it mix. Stupid. It was stupid how it all timed up and how it all kind of just meshed together, man. Mm-hmm. How'd it start? Like, how'd you get into it? Who, who had, you know, who had the... I think, uh... I mean, I think it goes back to 2018, right? If you think oh, about you're it. Oh, how do you get the idea for the podcasting? Oh, the There's inspiration. A couple of that oh, the motivation. Players. 1,000%. Ah, you guys definitely paved the way. 1,000%. Yeah, and all, you, guys, hey. you guys made it fucking look like it was a blast. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sitting here like, man, those guys are enjoying every single one of these things. Kind of created their own fucking world. Like, 1,000%. We definitely, uh... We definitely saw you guys doing it. It was like, man, this looks like something that we might be able to jump into as well. So I um, I, I think we got hit up with about podcasting. And I was like, the only way I'd do it is if I did it with my brother. Mm-hmm. And um, I think from there, me and Jason always wanted to do something together in the entertainment world. And this is kind of like the the transition into it, I guess. But, was Jason all in from the start? Because he's, oh yeah. he's obviously, he's, he's been somebody who hasn't been like a, He's never been like a social media guy like that. I know he's been yeah, pressing he's it a, on. He's a massive theatrics guy. He, he is, saw bro. when they won the Super Bowl back in the day. And he gave that talk after they won the, the Super Bowl. Talk. He's elite talk. He's elite talk. I remember Chris Long would always say like how he pressed Jason like, hey, you should do more. You should do more. Right. Um, classic offensive lineman. Classic offensive lineman. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to. Special group, man. Yeah, special, special group. group of dudes. Special group. For we, sure. Uh, who, who, uh, they have, who approached you? You said people approached you. Um, uh, doing a podcast. There were a few different uh, production like companies um, that kind of came to the board or that came to the table. I would say I really don't want to throw any names out there because we ended up choosing Wave Sports over all of them. So it was yeah. kind of like they hit us up about it and um, it kind of had the best like, I don't know, line of action to mm-hmm. go forward. And we vibed with them the most in terms of like the writing and, the, and like how we script everything out uh, per show. And mm-hmm. Um, from there, it was kind of just getting my brother on board. He's a, he's a stubborn dude and it's like real business mentality. Yeah. So it was like for him to weigh out the options. I was just like, I mean, these guys were fun to kind of hang with. You know, yeah. You don't want to just yeah. do it with them. Right. And my brother's like going through like the business side of things. I'm like, listen, however we got to get this thing going, let's do it, man. As long as you own that IP. All right now. All right now. All right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we All got right. that in there. When, when it first started, <laughs> did you think to yourself like, it was going to blow up as quick not as it did. fucking chance, dude. dude. There's no way. Why so not? Hurry. I don't know, man. I you, just guys, guys are... you know what? That's imposter syndrome. You got going. Because literally you, arguably one of the best. Of, no, there's nothing arguably. One of the best tight ends of all time. Thank you for that, Your dude. brother, who is going to be a Hall of Famer, has won a Super Bowl. Both of you have already won a Super Bowl. Like, it's you guys are essentially the new J.J. Watt brothers. You guys are the new J.J. <laughs> Watt brothers. The new Watt brothers. He started it. He started, he started it. it. <laughs> you guys are essentially the new darling brothers yeah. of the NFL. Dude, yeah. No, it was... Um, I definitely didn't expect to get that much fucking... You know what it was? It was the East Coast. It was the Philly like, cr- like crowd. Nuts. That, I don't realize awesome. how big that city is and how crazy they are until like we started the podcast and you start seeing 
how much like the comments and everything is real like Philly kind of heavy. So what were you most nervous about doing podcasts after every game? Andy Reid. Oh, yeah. for real? Andy Reid. There was no like I was like the first thing I thought I was like, fuck, Coach Reid's gonna kill me if I really do this. I feel like you just get him a greasy snack. Talk after about the podcast the games, comes talk, out. Talk, I feel like about, I need this. Just catch a ball on third and ten and then yeah. we're All good, right? Do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he um I'll tell you what, Coach, he does he does a good job of keeping guys in line, even though he likes to have fun with it, man. And uh, he's not a big, like, media guy. So when I, we actually got him on New Heights, it was, man, it was fucking fireworks. Me and my brother were both sitting there, like, uptight. Like, couldn't even. Bro, it was so funny. We were funny. just, like, going down the list of, like, questions, just making sure that we, like, I don't know, just asked him the yeah. right shit and didn't, like, wander off into telling too many stories about yeah. shit that we were probably going to have to delete. So Incredible episode, by the way. Yeah. Thank you, man. Once you get your head coach on. It's like, all right, everything's kind of fair game here. That was with, with us and Vrabel. Dude. We got Vrabel to come on. We're like, we're good. We're solid. Because Vrabel well, we were nervous that, as he comes fuck. from that Patriot tree. We were nervous Don't as fuck, fuck around too. Tree, yeah. Oh, for that? Yeah. I know, but that, that was when he was just peppering you, and I was kind of just off to the side. watching my boy get yeah, 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 for yeah, an hour true, and a half. True. It was tough but to But he watch. did talk about cutting his dick off for a Super Bowl, and that's what helped. That's, that's what spiked us, for real. <laughs> shout out the podcast. Yeah, shout out to on that yeah. one. <laughs> we needed them on that, dude. But when you talk about looking at, Questions. Do you write out your own questions or, or does this production company write out all the questions for you guys? Um, they pretty much do everything. Yeah. I yeah. um I, I kind of just I'll I'll have like one or two things that I want to ask whoever we have on there. Or if we like go through uh the run of show and I'll like kind of think of something on the spot, mm -hmm. I'll just shoot it and either it's ass and it gets deleted yeah. or yeah. we keep it and it was a banger. So um yeah, I I in terms of like the creativity of it all. I kind of just leave that up to the professionals so I can just show up and have some fun, man. And do your thing. Yeah. But that's part of the reason why you chose them, too, because you felt like you got along, and they're like, oh, these guys, you know, they got some humor. They exactly. kind of think the way we do and shit like that. Exactly. Because they got a couple now. It's like you guys and then uh, Paul George, I believe. Yeah. He's, he's good. They got a good one with him, too. Yeah. What the brothers do, the darling brothers. Like, the what Kelsey was it Super like Bowl. growing up with your brother? Like, were you guys always super competitive? Were you guys always together? Because you guys, from the outside looking in, seem like the closest dudes of all time. I mean... Every everything you could think of at dinner time, we're playing cards to uh, video games outside, playing every fucking sport you can imagine, just mm -hmm. competing at everything. And um, he had anger management, so I knew how to like take like, it diagnose, there and then just like, went like, to court or a thousand percent. Yeah, never acted on, never tried to fix it. Yeah, just <laughs> kind of like tamed him down. Just like, yeah, all right, well, don't fucking piss this guy off. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everybody in the city knew not to piss Jason off. That's so. And funny. he was, uh, he was kind of like that guy. So I was like, I could just live happy go lucky because everybody was scared of my fucking brother. Yeah. Throughout the city, so I'm like, <laughs> all the other freshmen are getting picked on in high school. I'm kind of just walking the halls like I'm. I've been there for years. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of how it was throughout. I don't know, even going to college and then into the league, it was kind of being able to just bounce off of him because he's been at every single step already before me. But he, um, yeah, he definitely, he was a, the ultimate competitor and just a fucking madman, dude. Yeah. Was it always the type of situation to where um, whether you beat him at anything, something as small as a video game in Madden, to where he's just fuming because younger brother beat him. I'm trying to think back at times. Probably so wouldn't even do it. It wouldn't so even do it. wouldn't even get to the end of the game. He would feel like it was about to like He'd I was about to win, coming. and he would just just flare up and just fucking yeah. I um, turn the game off. I knew I knew when to push the buttons and when not to push the buttons. Obviously, trial and error. You get your ass beat. You don't want to get your ass beat again. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you know you know where to take it and where to like reel it back. Um, but we really, we really didn't get into that many fights because I knew how crazy he was and I wasn't going to go down that road. And you're just thinking like, ah, oh, this ain't worth it. Like, dude, <laughs> like, hey, chill out, man. It's not worth it today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When you, so you guys are together your whole lives. You go to college together. And then you guys obviously get drafted at different teams. Was that tough for you to not be with your brother? Because it seemed like you guys were attached to the it was. It was Kick weird. Down. It was weird because they took Ertz. Yeah. So they took the Ertz. Like, it was a very, I want to say exact same player but we're very like similar in terms of our skill sets mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it was kind of like a slap in the face from the eagles and i was like damn these motherfuckers took my fucking dream to play with my brother in the league man well, that would have been insane especially when it was Fuck. right there then andy reed called and i was like oh, all right i'm good i'm good yeah andy's gonna dial some shit up for me cool dial it up for real and he's dialed dude he's switched the entire position i mean my my job in the offense isn't just to be a typical tight end you know what i mean he evolved this thing it was when I first got there, like my first probably five, six years, I was a, I was an inline blocker, like doing a lot of the full like wide tight end stuff mm -hmm. in the, in like base game plans and stuff. And now it's just evolved into a completely different offense because of a guy named Patrick Mahomes, but also because 
I can do more stuff and kind of affect the perimeter a little bit different. How good of a feeling was it when you realized I don't really got to block anymore? I can kind of go out there and, you know, believe it or cross sift once in a block, while. Blocking does get you open on specific like situations, specific yeah. plays and stuff like that. So I mean, I like to get in there. You know what I mean? Get dirty a little bit. A little have bit. Some fun. Yeah. Just, you know yeah, what I mean? Say face. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah, show face, up. Well, I am actually everybody a honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no uh, but it's uh yeah you know what I mean you got to stick your face in the fan when when needed but it's uh. It's definitely fun getting out there and getting a lot more catches than uh, than just banging heads all day. Beating Big Bro in the Super Bowl. I was uh, that was weird, man. It was weird. It was a it was a weird feeling. It was like getting the second one was like, oh, I, that's me. This is me. Yeah, I am him. I do this. This is what I fucking do. Yeah. yeah. And then you see your brother, and you're like, fuck! I just took that opportunity away from him. It's like you know how he feels, and it's just like, man, because I lost a fucking Super Bowl, and that shit sucks. Going into a, like, the Tampa Bay Super Bowl, man, that shit was fucking the worst feeling ever. Levante so David. Feeling, dude, he fucking, it's a dog right there. It is a dog. He is a dog. Just sniping at a boy right <laughs> just there. Just trying to get there. I'm in there. Boy, the boy some Levante that David. Boy, that motherfucker's <laughs> nice, too. Yeah, they're stuck. Um, yeah. yeah, so... I don't know. I just knew how I had a, like, I could feel how he felt, but all it, but all in the same, like, realm. I'm seeing the guys that I just did it with, and, like, it's like, yeah, and then it's yeah. like, oh. And because oh, it was almost. Ah, oh, damn, man. Just, my brother just got. Yeah, yeah and it was crazy. almost his last year. Yeah. I think he would have retired. You don't have to tell. I think he was going to retire if he won. He can come on the bus and. We'll yeah, he, he can speak for, for sure. himself. I don't, I don't talk to him a lot, but I think that $14 million is hard to pass up. So, uh, very true. Whether no or not, or however much fucking money he's making mm. right now for the Eagles, I think that'd be a, that'd be a hard, uh, hard contract to pass up. And you already know, man, the, this fucking game, when we're all said and done, we're all going to miss this shit, man. Yeah, you miss it. But there's, a, there's like a, when you're writing your own story in your head of how to go out, like what a way to go, like, with the confetti flying, you're on top. You're holding Lombardi. You're like, this is it. I'm done. Yeah. I could see it. Andrew Whitworth did it. He sure did. And it was with, beautiful. Like an 18 in or something. I, like, he was, he's, I was just nuts. I mean, he was, uh, yeah. he was long in the tooth. Yeah. As long as it, could, as it could get. But he was so effective. Yeah. Incredibly effective. Just so big. And when you taste that, you kind of see the side, especially in the podcast game, when it can be successful and you can see what it does. You're just like, oh, man, I don't have to. I have to get in there, I don't have to get in there and bang like this. Definitely. And go through that, doors. you know, weekly stress of watching, you know, the film and everything else. Obviously, it's a lot different when you're losing versus when you're winning. When you're winning, it's like just the greatest mix of all time. It seems he's like. had he's had a few of those losing years to where he was looking at Father Time, like, dude, this might be it. Yeah. yeah like, I might just hang yeah, this Things thing hurt out. more when you lose. When you lose a few games, you haven't experienced losing a whole lot in the last few years, but it sucks. Dude, I don't know if you remember. Fuck losing. Yeah, it's terrible. What has what has been the worst year you've had? Uh, my second year in the league, um, I think we were ten and six. Shut oh down. my god, bro! No, no, no. nine. No, 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 no. We were nine and seven. Even that's pissing me yeah. off. The playoffs. You missed the playoffs. Yeah, but it's above five hundred. You want to hear my what, first was your, year what was your worst year in the league? Three and thirteen. Wow. Two and fourteen. My Whoa, rookie year. Holy shit. Two and fourteen. I literally Dude. called. A guy that played uh, Michael Ruse, and I was like, "How the two fuck games. do you oh do this for ten God. years?" He's like, "Oh, you'll you'll figure it out." And I yeah. was like two and fourteen. That's we when won young. the first one. Oh, we man. won the first one against Kansas City, like twenty four to ten. We kind of steamrolled y'all. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. It was a Wait, bit when of a was it? When was this? Two thousand fourteen. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. I we got went in there, dude. Bernard Pollard fucking rocked me dude, that game. My goodness, dude, <laughs> I have no one explained to me the national anthem and Chiefs Kingdom, so I was just. You know, green they hit you, listening, yeah. and they did it, and it literally like a gunshot went off. I got nervous, it freaked me out for a second. Chiefs, Where am I? Where am the I? Chiefs got yeah. some, uh, it's exciting. Got some garbage time in that game too. A couple nice blocks, played about that's, ten snaps. That was yeah. my, uh, yeah, nice that was my deal. first game ever, man. We won that one, and we didn't win again until like week seven against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Damn, tough dude, tough win. And your worst season is a winning season. That pisses me off. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like, you don't even know what failure that is, was, do you? That's, that's that was weird, though. Cincinnati. Were you guys good at Cincinnati? Cincinnati? Uh yeah, we we won the Big East every every year I was there. <laughs> fucking this dude. Is that even exciting? The Big East? Yeah. Fucking yeah. A. The first two years for sure, because I was a like, guaranteed you're in one of the like top bowls. So we went to Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl. Then they did How'd you guys do in those bowls? Um 
Oh, baby. I don't know. I'm genuinely asking. Well, the first, the orange, find bowl, a win orange bowl year was Tyrod Taylor, mm. and he walked all over us and just scored tutties all day. Um, and then the next year was Tim Tebow's last collegiate football game. So oh, fuck, you guys had to play Florida. Yeah, there was. Uh, and Brian Kelly, our coach that had a undefeated season the entire year, ended up jumping ship to Notre Dame right before we played in the biggest game in the university's history. It was like kind of his mo, right? Yeah, it's kind of his deal. Yeah, that's his thing. Dips. That's Notre Dame's going to playoffs. Dip. How about that Sugar Bowl though? How much fun is that in Dude, New Orleans? It was so much fucking fun. So After? much fucking fun. I got kicked out of college because of it. That's awesome. <laughs> I partied a little too much down there, got hit with a drug test, and uh, from that point on, I realized I got to tighten the fuck up. Got to tighten it up. Yeah, I got to tighten it up. Some of those things that happen to you, though, you're like kind of gr like grateful. No, happens. for sure. you don't for know sure. where you'd be now. Um, What it did was it really it kicked me into the tight end room. I was still mm -hmm. playing QB then. Oh, really? So, Were yeah, you nasty? It was like, all right, you can come walk on the team, but we don't need a quarterback. You can just be an athlete on scout team for a year, and we'll figure it out. Just Dang. like, all right. What was, your you spot? what was your spot in Bourbon Street? Where were the boys at? Dude, I wasn't even 21. So I was I was it's running enormous. I was running yeah, I was running around on, on Bourbon just trying to get those uh, hurricanes. Yeah. The little green fuck. Yeah. Those are grenades. You were a four grenades. the grenades. You were a four loco guy. One thousand. No question. You know, like him one four the thing, like, hey, these are giving people heart attacks. Yeah. Scout team quarterback, all he would do is like whether he'd go to night class or not, he'd have a four loco and just talk about how he torches the defense every day. Yeah. You know, he's playing you know, that's Travis he's, he's playing yeah, I'm going to show up and score on these many chances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, put it in, man. What's uh? What was your like feeling going into the game against Philly? Obviously, with the emotions of your brother compared to Tampa Bay. Dude, I know the, you've been you've been in other ones. You've other one of the Super Bowls, but those two is a win and a loss. Yeah, I would say uh, the Eagles one was so special because it was just you know nobody gets to put their family on the front page of the newspaper, like in everybody's like living room. Mm -hmm. Like we were able to put our family that where we're from, the city we're from. And, you know, a lot of people that we were, you know, close to growing up all got the opportunity to kind of speak on our behalf back in Cleveland. So it was just cool to see um, how everybody appreciated our upbringing, our childhood, our family, our brother dynamic. Mm -hmm. So that was, it was just, it was so unique. And I, and I honestly remember that going into the game more than anything, being able to see my mom on good morning America my dad's doing freaking podcast interviews left and right with some of his favorite guys. And I'm just sitting here like, man, this shit's really fucking going down. Yeah. Like my family's everywhere right now. Really calling out the Kelsey Bowl. The yeah. Kelsey Bowl. It was, uh, it was a wild feeling. So I, outside of just getting scraped in the Tampa Bay Super Bowl and winning the Eagles Super Bowl. Yeah. The Eagles Super Bowl pre everything was just so much fucking it fun. It seems so revolved around you and your brother. From the outside looking, it got in. a little. It got a little awkward. It got a little awkward. Yeah, like all the way up into like the coin toss. Like, uh, if you weren't at the game, you didn't even see it. But my mom was like on the jumbotron doing a which brother is which right before the coin toss. Uh -huh. So we're like sitting there, standing like during a commercial break, staring at each other. Eagles players, Chiefs players, everybody's like waiting for this moment, and mom is on the jumbotron doing a Travis and Jason like. I'm just like, this is... That's nuts. Enough is enough. Can we just play football? <laughs> yeah, Fucking, yeah. Oh, man. This is but, way too much about us. Was Mom, there a level Mama of Kelsey jealousy? Shining. Yeah. Was there a level of jealousy from your dad? Because it seemed like your mom really got a lot of... I mean, yeah. The, the, everybody I, loves a good mom. I, I don't think there was any jealousy, but my dad was kind of like... Eh. They don't want to hear my... on some yeah. of this? Yeah. You know? She seemed like she was everywhere. He was He was, Damn, he was happy she wore was, was in the Hall of Fame. He was happy. Yeah, exactly. That's See, cool. stuff like that. But... Everybody, you know, has that that love for their mother, and my dad, my dad gets it. He he understands it all. But, um, and you can't tell him anything, man. His two boys made it to the league, and we're in the situation we were last year. So he's he was doing cartwheels and backflips through it all, anyways. Bro, they got to be so fucking proud of you guys, dude. I think I because honestly, and you 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 probably know how it is now too. Like with kids, like one day when you have them too, like you can only imagine what it's like to see their kids grow up mm. and go. You know, or you earned a scholarship, I assumed, at yeah. Cincinnati. Yeah. Both on scholarship. Re-earned it. Re re -earned it. Yeah, re-earned it. got two scholarships. Yes. You know, you see them grow up. You Thank see you. them have their, their lows and highs. They get drafted to the NFL. They end up playing against each other in the Super Bowl. Both Hall of Fame guys in their Dad's respective just positions. Everywhere. Like, He's just so yeah, happy. bro. <laughs> you know he walks into every barbecue or any type of the, the barbecue showing. The barbecue's like, yeah. You know eyes are on him. He knows yeah. eyes are on him. Like, yeah. they want to know about my boys. That guy's genetics? Yeah. Don't fuck with yeah, his yeah. genetics. Yeah. You know, too, since, since the dad's not out there doing it, like, you kind of get to watch them do it. Like, that's your moment to shine. Yeah. 
Get in front of your boys, yeah. get in front of your yeah. friends, like group chat, spicing up. Right. You he walks couple, over to the grill, gives yeah. a couple pointers on the hamburgers. Even if they're not even good pointers, they're like, fuck, we probably should do that. Yeah. Yeah. This, guy, this, yeah. this guy's the ultimate dad. That's funny yeah. as fuck. They're the probably telling dad. him congratulations after the Super Bowl, and he's probably leaning more towards like Jason and you know, talking about the shortcomings. Yeah. Like, yeah, but it was also hard, but also thinking like, yeah. You're, yeah. We got another one. Yeah, we got another one. But we didn't get one, didn't we? No matter what, when they both got the bid to the Super Bowl, dad's like, ah, got another one. Yeah. Do you get him? Do you get him like a replica of the ring, um, like a little replica of Lombardi trophy? Yeah, I got him a Lombardi from the first one. I still yeah. got to get these replicas on the uh, on the way for the second one. But yeah, I actually got him one for uh, for our Super Bowl and my brothers because my Man. brother does. My brother's not in the shit like that, so he doesn't like the I'll memorabilia. Make sure, I'll make sure he holds it down in the house. Yeah, we'll yeah. just yeah shit like that. He he's, doesn't. He doesn't like to play dress up for yeah, travel. Exactly. You know, even though he's exactly. wearing like you, he's dressing he, up. He's dressing up. Crazy. <laughs> you that. Yeah, no, I do hear that. It's been, Nuts. it's been like off and on too. Like someone's just flipping a switch. Right. That shit is just, and then Nashville it's just for you. That is Nashville, dude. I had something I was thinking. It's about. gonna put a, it's gonna put a wrinkle in tight, tight in you, possibly. <sighs> I hope not, man. Yeah. Last year was hot as fuck. Yeah, I was, I, I was dry heaving on the field. Yeah. yeah. It was not, it was not a good showing. You hear that we'll real see. loud, JP? Uh, it's not too bad. All right, it's cool. Not too bad. Right, Enough about football, dude. Let's talk about SNL. SNL, Your boy man. grew up a massive SNL dude. fan. One of my bucket list things to do is to host SNL one day. Dude, I can see you fucking killing it. Well, I appreciate that. That's very kind see, of like, you. You would do fucking good. Thank you. But you did amazing. Thank you, man. You yep. did, I, I thought your monologue in the beginning was incredible. You integrating your brother into it. Was your brother, when he sat there, was were they told like, hey, don't make a face or nothing? Or was that him? No, he, was, he, they, he knew it was coming because we did a few of the rehearsals and he saw it. But he was... Um, he knew he was like, I'm gonna make sure that you know that I'm not enjoying this. Dude, it was it's like we're such basically a funny throwing part. it in his face that he just lost the Super Bowl and it was like, Hey man, you cool with you cool with us like uh yeah. making fun of this thing? Yeah. Or, you, gotta, you, know, you gotta be okay right? with it. It's, it's SNL. SNL. <laughs> you gotta chirp. Look at that is so yeah. funny. Just a little bro, a little bro on top once again. When you're standing behind that door and they're like, All right, 15 seconds till you're out, and then you hear the music Goose start bumps. playing. Dude, goosebumps. Goosebumps. Were your legs like jello? It was like, dude, when I tell you so. You rehearse the monologue like three or four times before you actually do it. And there, there's an entire dress rehearsal where there's a live crowd, like people like come in, and that's that's the one where you do every single skit start to finish, no time frame mm. condenses anything. So it's like that's the one where you're really like getting like your bearings and like everything. Yeah. Going out of that one, like my eyes are watering, like I'm like getting like real emotional, like goosebumps everywhere, legs getting kind of weak, and you open the door, and all of a sudden you're just like. You got to turn it on, man. You got to turn it on. Get out of your fucking head. Oh, you got to turn it on. And it's like you're going down the steps. And it's like, don't fall. Number one, right. don't fall down the steps. Make sure you hit your mark where you're supposed to stand. There's but, probably a piece of tape. That's an X dude, you got to right stand there. on. Dude, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. Get too far forward. Camera's out of focus. Fuck. Damn, it was, uh, it's, it, it, it's a machine from start to finish. You get there Monday night all the way till Saturday night or Sunday morning, man. They have that thing scheduled out and laid out. It's just one of the coolest experiences, man. And the people... Go ahead, buddy. I was going to say, was that your favorite thing to do post-Super Bowl? 100%. 1,000%. It was the coolest. The yeah. coolest shit ever, man. And when that monologue came out and it was going you know, viral, making its rounds, it was like, oh, the boy absolutely murdered it. Yeah, because something else was going on that day. I forget, It might have been like a big UFC fight. And everyone was real focused on a UFC fight. Something, yeah, yeah. There was I think something a McAfee happening. tweeted out like, hey, everyone's watching the UFC fight. You need to see Travis Kelsey yeah, on yeah, yeah. SNL. Just crush Shout it. Shout out to yeah. Mac, man. What is, I love that how, many, how many live skits did you do compared to like filmed skits so we did three pre-recorded skits um got my guy creed humphrey in on one of them nice um he ended up that one didn't air though so it just got thrown on uh on social media afterwards Tough. on youtube afterwards i was hurting for my guy man he made he made it like he had like his like super bowl parade back in oklahoma city like the next day and i was like dude can i fly you out here and get you back please yeah he's like dude if i can get back for the parade i'm in i'm just like and then it didn't even air, and I was like, fuck. Oh, hey, don't worry, brother. I'm about to drop it on the gram. Let's Dude, collab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah we'll collab yeah, yeah, on it. Don't worry. It's exactly what it was. No, but so we did three pre recorded, and then I think there, were, there ended up being like eight or nine like live skits that we ended up doing. But the last like probably three of them are all condensed so much because of like time, timing wise mm -hmm. that it's like, it's, I don't want to say it's a whole new script, but you're literally, you have to read the cards. Like, yeah. you can't just, like, go off of memory because they'll take out an entire segment in a conversation that 
you're thinking you're like supposed to say, if, but if you're not reading the card, you won't know. So there's no ad libbing going on at all. During no, the week, are you like, no. hey, what if I say this instead? No, fuck no, I wasn't saying are any you of sure? that, dude. I was, I was so like, he doesn't have like the go. Will Ferrell, Chris nah, Farley yeah, treatment. Yeah, but there's also, I'm sure I they wrote to. some stuff for you, and you're to. like, I would never say this. You know, like if you're doing a skit. Like the monologue for sure. I knew the yeah. monologue was kind of like that was like going to be mine, but everything else, like the writers have been like working on these skits and like these segments for like weeks on weeks on weeks and like finally getting them right to this moment. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come in like, all right, well, what about this? Yeah. And it's like, that's fair. I don't even have any like real like writing ability. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm just trying to be funny and like creative. And so I, I, I kind of reeled it back. I caught myself asking him about one thing. But I reeled it back and was you just feel like, the you know energy. what? Like, yeah. uh, you're kind of taking a shot like, at my yeah, writing. Yeah, no, I think I kind of like it like this, though. And I'm just like, <laughs> don't say it again. Yeah. Got it. Don't ask again. You've got don't it. Ask. You're the professionals. When did, right. they, when did they reach out to you about doing SNL? Like, how many weeks So, actually, Heidi Gardner, who's, uh, who's been on SNL for years and years, absolutely kills it. Um, she's a Kansas City girl and is a huge Chiefs fan. You go to her, like... Uh, what is it? Her um her dressing room and everything in there is Chiefs galore. No she had way. like a little barbecue, like pre like pregame party in her room. Had nothing but barbecue in there for KC vibes. She she had been kind of like pitching the idea to get. I think it was initially Mahomes after the first Super Bowl, but then kind of like as I started to like show my personality more, she started to kind of like throw my name in there. And when we won the Super Bowl, uh. I was fortunate enough to just kind of get the call. No brainer. We're gonna do no it. brainer. Dude. No brainer. The whole Super Bowl was revolved around them. Yeah, like they're gonna be like, let's sure. this guy. Yeah. Favorite? Uh, you you brought up barbecue. What's your favorite barbecue spot in Kansas City? Man, I don't like to get into politics, dog. I really don't. You're gonna get me fucking killed out there. I'm just saying because I I, uh, I went to a couple. I love Oklahoma Joe's, man. I love that gas station vibe. Joe's baby. That's Joe's nice is there. nice, and, and it's a good vibe. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you yeah, feel yeah. like it's like authentic and real and. I, you, the gas station, Joe's, Kansas City Joe's is always, but formerly Oklahoma Joe's, now J Kansas City Joe's. I would say Jack Stack, you can't go wrong with. That's kind of like the white cloth, like barbecue. It's like the nice okay. restaurant. Still great spread. You can get fucking anything on the menu. It slaps. Uh, Q39 is more Fire. of like your like sports bar barbecue, but it's a little bit cleaner. Still, you ever, you ever, you ever go to Q39, get the burnt ends. You guys know what burnt ends oh, are? Yeah. yeah. They're like fucking protein candies, man. Things are fucking. You could just keep popping those things in, dude. I mess with burn ends now. Yeah, you can. Fu you can. You can fuck some shit up in Kansas City. I love man. how you're giving all the big spots some love. Gates, Arthur Bryant's. I mean, you name it, man. Is there a sleeper Can't hole in the wall that people don't know about? Only locals know about. Um. No, not really. Not, at least not, nothing that I've like come across yet. Mm -hmm. But you can't go wrong, man. I mean, if you're fucking a barbecue, man, fuck you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm with that. I can get behind that. You know what I mean? Let's uh let's talk about 2019, the AFC Championship. Should we talk about the AFC Championship or should we talk about or should we start where you guys beat them um when you guys were 2 and 4 going into the that's bye week? Something. And that's when you guys basically got back on track to make that push to yeah, the AFC to make Championship. That push. Well, I mean, we did do that. How did that feel when we beat your ass Dude, in the regular I, season? Honestly, in the, the regular last season. couple times we've played in Tennessee, we have gotten scraped. It is so weird how Tennessee always plays Kansas City well. Even this past year. Dude, it was with, a, our, a, with Malik a Willis. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Vrabes, man. Northeast Ohio guy, man. Doc, Gotta respect uh, it. He's a ball it. player. He's just a ball player. He's a good ball coach, huh? Yeah. No, you could you could tell, man. You could tell he's fun to play for, man. We, he was uh he was a Pro Bowl coach like two years ago. Yeah. So it was fun catching up with him and just kind of seeing how he vibes. I would um how many cigarettes you did you see him put down? Dogs. I mean, just golfing with him out in Tahoe, one round. Yeah. I think I saw a good two packs. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Yo, Vray, is that a light day? Is that a light day? I don't know. I always <laughs> would walk by. His truck used to be right where the entrance was to the facility, and I'd always see a pack of Marlboros, like, sitting right in a center console. But he would he hit that fucking jewel like it owed him money. Yeah. Like, he was on yeah. that thing all he of the time. He punished that motherfucker. He yeah. did. He always put a dip in. That man lives for some nicotine now. He yeah. lives right for now. it. All uh, right now. Yeah, he's a he's like that, dude. When, I was, doing, when I was doing that skit the, uh, that last year, mm. I was trying to bring the jewel in, and he wouldn't let me. Really? Yeah. He's like, no, you can't. He's like, you're here. I let you in the building. You're not doing the job. That gym. is a brave thing, though. He's a big, he likes the big dog cats. Yeah. He does yeah. like the big dog cats. Listen, man, you got to keep order. You got to keep everything. Will. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, loves, he loves the body bag, Will, dude. Yeah. It's, hard, it's hard to watch sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll find my moment one day. Yeah, but he's a good dude, man. But yeah, I don't know. 
the th- crazy thing is the parallel between the regular season game in 2019 and the AFC Championship. Like, you guys were up 10-0 after the first quarter. Mm-hmm. And then AFC Championship, we were up 10-0. And the flip, it all switched yes. when Pat Mahomes did that two-minute drill. The man, Dude, we, the run and I ran the half. same 40. Shut How is he so elusive? Up. The guy, I don't know, he's just a gamer, man. He's just a gamer. That nobody likes to give him credit for the for the wheels, man. He had, he finds a way to you know just get first downs. But that one, that was, I mean, that had to be the best run of his life. That was nuts. Right before half, it's, AFC it's, Championship. It's, it's, I was like, bro, we're gonna win this. I, little that was, spin. I, that was more was on like, the we're defense. gonna win this game. I thought we're the, just the worst going ball to the security goal. ever going into the end zone. Too yes. that thing was like flopping around. Like, I was like, no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. In the tackling though, oh, Patty, hey, Patty hey, Mahomes, easy, baby. Easy. I was watching. Yeah, that was when I was on the Raiders. I was watching, but the tackling was horrendous on that play. I think all the boys know that that is the truth. It, it, it was. A, it When's was the last time you tried to tackle Patty Mahomes? It's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get my licks in on the microphone these oh, he's days. Got them, he's got them slender hips, man. Those, he, he slides around on guys. You know, man. honestly, I don't think I've ever gotten to actually get an opportunity. Oh. You know, I'm more like going one on one against Ben Neiman out there. Ooh. In the trenches on fourth Names. down. God needed me more for fourth down in my back half of my career. Yeah. The most so I never important got a, down. The most yeah, important I never down. got a real opportunity. It was more like last time I played against the Chiefs was uh, Alex Smith. So it wasn't, I want to say that was Alex's last year when we came there to Arrowhead when Washington came. But other than that, like my only moments against the Chiefs, the first year I came when it was the AFC Championship year with you guys, you guys were one of our first games. So I was big chilling and more like, man, we're getting our fucking ass whipped out of here. Yeah. Because you're not like ingrained in the culture to, you know, I, I want to say one moment, Patrick's, you know, running around, just throws it up to you. You catch it over Joyner, the boy Joyner uh, at the time. And then the the second time around was like the first week back and I'm out there fucking scraping your guys' logo and we just get wrecked. <laughs> that was, uh, you know that game, you know the game I'm talking about? I do about? remember that one. Because everybody's like, look at Will leading him out there to the was, logo. Uh, and we oh just get God. whooped like 50 something to 14. Mm-hmm. It was Watching his name, 9-1 DN. Um, um. Fuck. I'm trying what to blank. For what team? He played on the Jaguars. In, oh, uh, Yannick and Doc. Yeah, 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 Yannick. Yeah. He's a dog. He's a great... First time I played Yannick. He's a dog. He's a dog. I Yannick, he told me he was going to shoot me after the game. Dog, I'll I tell thought, you. That's pretty aggressive. Yannick is okay. like... So that's yeah. what the day is going to be like. Yeah. This is what yeah. we're doing. He was a rookie, too. I was like... I I kind of got some shit to him. Yannick is a dog. Like, even in walk, there's like, he's somebody that's like about his business on the field. And like, yeah, he like let us out there to the middle. So, oh, we going out here in the middle? Hell yeah, boys fucking start. Scraping yeah. on the logo. Let us Boys took it at disrespect. Middle. Man. Arrowhead is, is Arrowhead the loudest stadium? 1,000%. In the NFL, louder than Seattle? Yeah. Yeah. No. I've never played in Seattle when it's like rocking, rocking, though. Like playoffs? I haven't played out there during playoffs, so it's like, I don't know. You played a regular like, season game. Arrowhead, loud. Arrowhead when it's when it's rocking during playoffs, man, it gets fucking rowdy in there. It is nuts. You can't hear a thing. Yeah. I love the it. guys will be from me to you, and I won't be able to hear a word. They're yeah. screaming at yeah. the top of their lungs. You can't hear a damn thing. Yeah. Kingdom, baby. It gets so damn cold there, too, dude. It is yeah. crazy. We've, we've been pretty fortunate these past couple years, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on with global warming, but we didn't have Benefiting. a single we didn't have a single snow game or game under like 10 degrees last year. We had one game. We I usually have like, one uh, or two. So you like believe 17? in global warming just to... I'm not even sure I'm what <laughs> I just... I'm, before we really get into this, <laughs> yeah. no, right? I'm not even sure if global warming is the reason why yeah. it didn't snow. I'm just kind of <laughs> connecting dots here. Yeah. Sounds Spit smart. Ball. Sounds smart. Yeah. Just Sitting ball. in the locker room connecting it all. Like, I, if I reiterate, I don't know what the fuck global warming is yeah. doing, but... Yeah. yeah, You guys saw this tweet about global warming? I think that shit's real. It, uh, Mahomes. Obviously, we had to talk about Mahomes a little bit. Would you, what was your impression of him when, you fir- when he first got to the Chiefs? Um... Tyreek Hill talks, and he thought he was garbage. <laughs> so <laughs> Tyreek's funny as hell, man. I will say this. He was not like a polished QB, mm-hmm. but when the ball snapped, I mean, he's Patty Mahomes. He just has he's natural from the, get-go. from the get-go. I remember watching him on scout team. I was just like, this is what this guy is capable of doing? Like, he would literally run out right to the, like, 60 yards on the run opposite, like, opposite end zone corner and it's just like what the fuck was that mm-hmm. and everybody's just like oh scout team he just runs back to the huddle i'm like bro did you guys just see this yeah like what the fuck this guy's out here doing this shit just nonchalant like if he can somehow find a way to do this in a game which he then showed that he could do it's just like it's unbelievable but the first like impression you get from him is that he's just a relatable dude he just loves ball he just likes to be around the guys and shoot the shit be in the locker room kicking it um and then 
competitive wise, he's just always playing something, doing something, competing at something. And Seems like you're gonna, we're going to get to see a lot of shit talking with this new Netflix series that's coming out. You're definitely going to catch it. You're definitely yeah. going to catch it a little bit. I think. Uh, what do you think, think people will learn watching the Netflix? Him and Crosby series? get after it, dude. Him and Crosby, Max, dude, get <laughs> after it. Like we'll white face butt each other, head buddy, like punch each other at the bottom of piles. Like they get after it. Really? Yes. You get off the climb and do anything when you see somebody punch your quarterback? Oh, for sure. Yeah. You'd, you'd hope so. For sure. Yeah, especially our. Our enforcer. Who's your enforcer? Trey Smith, baby. Trey Smith is the enforcer, He's a dog. huh? He's a dog. He said balls, baby. Balls? He's a dog like that. Dude, just a fucking beast. Are you blocking Max one on one? Um, I have inside out on the backside of like a play or something like that. I yeah. think uh, I've I've got him like once or twice in pass pro just because he like he's like what the fuck's going on. You know yeah. what I mean? And like balls out. Yes, I won that one. <laughs> Do you let him know? <laughs> like he's still trying to piece it together. Like why is this guy standing here? You know? And then I'm just like, is a screen coming balls out? Yeah, that's what it really yeah. is. Because I hit him yeah. with a few screens before. But yeah, no, he um he's a fucking beast, man. Do you let him know? Do I let him when know? When you get him? Um, not really. I don't like to. I don't like to make my the, my tackles lives harder. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I won't yeah, talk yeah. too much yeah. shit with him. But nice. uh, we'll have some fun out there. What was crazy about the last Raiders game that we played at in Arrowhead is that you could tell the defensive coordinator did not want me to like enjoy my day at all. Mm -hmm. like, I was getting butched, double teamed at the line of scrimmage. Um, Farrell and Crosby were just like punching me in the fucking face, coming off the ball, and it was it was I, I had a blast doing it because it was like it added another element to the game of like mm -hmm. another challenge to like try and like still to get open. Out. Yeah, they're trying to here we go, baby. Yeah, we shine, baby. This is it. Prove them all wrong. And then I had four touchdowns off of like <laughs> 25, 25 yards. Yeah, it was like one of the that most buns shit, stats that was of nuts. ever. It was like I think Jerome Bettis is the only one to have like a more buns like stat stat line, which is three touchdowns off of like two yards. No shit. Yeah, it was like five carries too. It was, but I just remember like uh, I, I actually went outside the numbers one time. Farrell comes outside the numbers. Right over top of me, DB behind him, safety staring at me from over here. I'm just like, well, I think the ball's probably going somewhere else. But yeah. let's just have some fun on the line of scrimmage here. I get off the line of scrimmage, slapped in the face, <laughs> fall on the ground. I'm like rolling on the ground. I get up, get hit down again, and uh, look look back. There was fine. There was a flag and everything, but the ball definitely went the other way. But it was just like that. I hadn't been in a game like that in forever, mm -hmm. man. It was a fucking blast. Yeah. How's it, how's it feel to know that teams are legit wanting you to not play? Well, like, like we, I think we played uh, in a wild card game, and I think it was like 2016 or 17. Yeah, you got, got knocked out of the game. Knocked out. You got dude. knocked out. Yeah. Legitimately, the defense was like, "Fuck yeah, we got him out of the game." Like they were like, <laughs> didn't want you to be hurt, but they're like, "Thank God he's not playing." Yeah. No, they've. I took a fucking right, the uh, Mike Tyson right hook right to the side of the dome, dude. and you, went, you were slumped. I was. Too. Yeah. The whole like, I think it was left side of my body. Yeah. The whole left side of my body, I couldn't even like move. For a good like ten seconds, yeah, and I was like, I've never been hit like this in my fucking life. No like, way! Holy shit! And then I um, I got like my bearings back in the in the actual like locker room and everything because it went right into half, and I thought I was gonna be good to come back out. And the doc told me no, and then you guys, you guys ended up getting us. Mm. Were you on this? You were. You were. No, no my no. first year was eight. It was a Ryan suck up. Who played Ooh, you did. A Ryan suck up. Like fifty. Field goal for the win. Field goal. I don't think we played them in the regular season. Mm. It's only you like that next the last year. Last question of the day. We need to hit this tier talk. We, I got a tier got, talk. I think. Do we have the time for tier talk? We can. We can. We can run over just a little just bit. We can get over it. Yeah. Okay. We can run over. Let's do the last question and then we'll hit the tier talk. Do you have a last question? I can figure one out by the time you're done. But if we do the tier talk, it gives you time to think about the twisted question. All right. Let's do the tier talk. We got to. We got to run the it. The tier talk. Let's do it. Top three. Quarterback tight end combinations of all time, and you can include yourself and Patrick Mahomes. See, I already made this mistake and included myself on my my own Mount Rushmore. Got kind of got dicey. Chopped down. Yeah, Can't read all the comments. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta get out of there. I'm gonna take myself out of it. Gronk and Tom Brady, fucking two the best to do it. Number one, number one. Number one. Philip Rivers, Antonio Gates. Fuck, those guys were good. Have you guys ever, have you guys actually ever diagnosed Philip Rivers and Antonio Gates? Not like when you said actually diagnosed, that's where I was like, no, not actually diagnosed. Dude, we're not they we're were unfucking stoppable. Look how many touchdowns Antonio Gates has. It is fucking ridiculous. 
I think he has the most touchdowns ever as a tight end. Hmm. So you're putting them two below. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, the rings, man. You can't. That's true. Can't yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Can't deny the rings. They, went to, th- a, they both went to another team, got a ring. Mm-hmm. It burns, but it happened. Um, who else? Who's my third? Who's my third? Damn. I mean, I guess I got to go Elway and Shannon Sharp. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of who else was like. Yeah, Manning and Clark. Oh, that was a good one, but there's. I'm still going. Clark is too white. Shannon, yeah. yeah. I fucking love his mentality, though, man. No doubt. I, last I really year, tight end you. Mentality. Are you kidding me? Yo, this dude, like, you, we're you, not you, that. We need to be that. Yeah, yeah. Dude, the guy is. He just looks like a regular guy, and it's like, yo, he fucking just turns it on. Got a, yeah. his kid out there watching. The, the Clarks were there. The Clarks up. were fucking there, dude. Do you want to go? Do you want to do a t- your top three? No, I just wanted to hear his. <laughs> All right. My top three, uh, you know, there's it's not going to be much different. I think I would just piggyback off of yeah. you know, the tight end. And I would put Mahomes and Kelsey at number one. Yeah. Even though I've said a lot of choiceful words about your team and your organization, to which I know you probably motivated you guys to win the Super Bowl this past year. I mean, it was, I, I heard it for sure. Because it was in the locker room. There were rumblings in the locker room. Bull I heard Thompson. it. I was like, fuck you too, Will. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Fucking guy, man. Bulletin board material. You probably hung it right up in the locker. Fuck you, Travis Kelsey. The Chiefs are not <laughs> making the playoffs this year. I just heard it in my head every day I went out for practice. That's- yeah, and your fucking fan base never stops letting me know about that hot take, which, you know, respect yeah. to them. It will be a rivalry that is now created. A rivalry between Will Compton and yeah. Chiefs Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's going to be some fans that are going to be so mad that Travis even came on this podcast. They're going to be like, Will's such a scumbag. But anyway, you know, we got that offer. Yeah, I mean, the top three? Yeah. I would go three, Delaney Walker, Marcus Mariota. Two, two, I would go, <laughs> I would go George Very Kittle and any backup is... quarterback ever. Where, which one? Hold on. Where, where, where? Kittle anything? and any backup quarterback of all time ever. Dude. He just figures Kittle out period. a way to make it happen. Yeah. No, I'm with you. And then one. Probably you two. Probably you and Pat. I'll take it, baby. So let's go. Tom and I, I like the top three. Fouts I like and, JP's Fouts and Tom. No, no, to don't, let that, don't say over that over Gronk. Mike. Yeah, yeah, over they Gronk and uh, Brady. The passer rating. You throw that one in there for me. Uh, okay, twisted question. It's time got? for the twisted question. Keep it twisted with smooth, refreshing twisted tea. The mm. hard icy that's perfect for parties, a bar with your buddies, or game day. Grab mm. a twisted today. My twisted question of the day is, what kind of tipper are you? Listen, man, you got to be a good tipper. I'm over 20%. Are you? Yes. Are you sure? 100%. Okay. There is some literature out there. That I'm not a good tipper? It's your frugal about tipping. It's your frugal about tipping. It might, might have been a reason you were dumped in the past. Oh, shit. That's good shit. Um... That was a that was a fun lead in. No, no, that's that, uh, was, that, was, that was all that was all fucking never blatant coming lies. on the show again. That was all blatant lies. Was it blatant lies? Mm. You're willing to stand ten toes ground like this is where we are not intimidated One by your guys' thousand. takes, dude. No, there's no way that that was fucking real about my past relationship. So if you get you go to a steakhouse, yes, let's say the bill's fifteen hundred dollars. Yes, great service. Drinks came out fast. I'm with the you. appies were quick. What are you tipping? Fifteen hundred. I'm probably going close to five. 500? Yeah. Nice. Respect that. I, I especially, you know, it's just good food, good service. I'm here for it. Hypothetical situation. You're at a coffee shop. Okay. They you go to insert your card. They say, okay, sir, just two questions right here. And they flip the tablet on you. Mm-hmm. It says three, four, or five. Your coffee was 450. What are you pressing? Or there's a custom uh, button on there too. Yeah, there's a custom button custom on there too, button. but no one does a custom button. No. I have in the past. Um, if it's, yeah, I'm probably going right in the middle. Right in the middle? Not, it, I'd feel weird tipping more than what I paid for the coffee. Mm-hmm. So I'd probably go right in the middle. I'd go three. $4 for four and a half. What if it's, what if it's March of 2020? Come again? March of 2020. Middle of COVID. We're trying to help small businesses here. They flip the tablet on you. Three, four, or five. Five. That's yeah. where it all came about. That's yeah. where all that You're tipping came about. Yeah, you actually put me on game with that. that strategy success. came about. You set me up for success right now. Mm-hmm. I um, I will say this though, man. I heard bad rumors about Scottie Pippen not tipping, and you don't want to get that fucking rap, man. No. That's not a good rap. That you Taylor know. literally will look at the bill, and then see what the tax was, and remove the tax out of the equation, and do the twenty right off of how much the food was. 
That's a good. That's a good man right there. You're good man. You're good <laughs> at math. He's lying. You're good at math. Huh? No, I'm not good at math. I do. I'm a heavy tipper. But as Will's pointed out, it's more for my own good karma. I am looking out for me when I send a fat tip out there. I'm thinking to myself in the universe, this is gonna come back to me tenfold. Nice man. Hell yeah. yeah. That is my deal. I was more like trying that. to lean into like this is how frugal Taylor is. He will take out the taxing on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, I got yeah. it. Yeah. We all. Got, I think. We almost all got there. Almost. Yeah. Seems like I was a little behind. I was, went way over my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's one, all right, last question. <laughs> last question. What's one thing you want to do from an entertainment perspective when all football's over? If you want to act in movies. I wanna, yeah, I want to jump question. in, the, I want to jump into the, the acting world, man. Scripted comedies, man. Keep me right there. Scripted comedy. You want to be in the comedy Keep game. Right there. Yeah, that's mm. it, man. That's the only thing I have fun with, man. I don't think I could ever, like, embody like an entire like character in like i don't know like an action movie or a drama movie definitely not drama action who knows man maybe i'll do some some bicep curls or something get get an actual like i feel like you mean look to me yeah i mean burt kreischer just had a movie come an action movie come out you could probably do but burt was fully <laughs> being himself <laughs> fully you know what I mean? like i feel like you almost have to do an action movie just so you can get the cameo and do just some Macho Some type cliche shit. line right at there. the end. Yeah, I don't know what that line is. I had nothing for you, but something that's, <laughs> you know, a John Wick type movie where you say forty five words. I'm in. I'm down. I'm in for that. I'm in for a cameo. Yeah, make comedies great again. We do need some some good comedies back in our lives because I don't think they've been. I don't think they've been well since, what the Will Ferrell days. Yeah, Will Ferrell's coming back though. Is we gotta he? Let, we gotta let Travis go. Okay, fine. Time to. Brother, it's been great having you on. We'll see you. We'll see you at the uh, at tight end. You tomorrow. Uh, obviously, I'm sure we'll get some the old rivalry back. back yeah, on come track. on, baby. The matchup yeah, everybody misses. You're gonna throw some cleats on? I might. <laughs> you really said that uh, that uncalled for Patrick Mahomes thing earlier, and I, I've been thinking about it ever since. But yeah, I might have to throw the cleats on. What was on, what was the Patrick Mahomes thing? You ever ta tried tackling Patrick Mahomes? No, I said when was the last time you tried it? Because he he acted like it was easy to tackle him on that one run. Yeah, for and there to be a last. Dude, time he was hitting, hitting everybody with spin moves, man. If Pat wants to see me, it'll be on fourth down. Pat's breaking out the spin move, man. <laughs> yeah. If Pat no, no. wants to see me, it'll be on fourth down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but thanks a lot, bro. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we do. Uh, you guys are legends, man. Sorry for running over. And congrats on your success with New Heights. We're really happy for you. Seriously. Thank you, appreciate you guys paving yeah. the way, baby. You know Amazing. he's also doing, I know this, we can even cut this part out, but he's also, they're also doing a beer thing, I think, next week. Yeah, you guys, you guys got, like, actual, like, guys, like, players that come in and, like, Dean oh. Blandino is our official referee, so he's going to come in. Oh, you guys yeah. were invited to that, but I think yes, Jace, you because have a foundation. Yeah. Is literally, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a foundation thing, and then you had something come up, or maybe you didn't, but because Jason didn't, you no, didn't I was do just had to go to Jason's foundation. Thing. You're doing that where you're like you're bringing people in, and they're they're you almost know, doing like we're beer doing a show and like everything. That. Yeah, it's like uh, we're calling it the Beer Bowl, not necessarily Beer Olympics. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, yeah, different world. We got to get you guys in the Beer Olympics next year. Dude, we, it was a big miss. I was so fucking pumped when you guys hit me about it. I was. I was upset. Man. Then Travis we'll, made we'll the start decision planning way for you. Jason made the decision for you. Yeah. Mm, fair enough. Yeah, we'll get you. We'll get you on next year, though. Well, thank you everybody for watching. Big hugs, tiny subscribe. kisses. Subscribe. Subscribe. Right you guys are legends. Hey. Where are you guys out to? Where are you, where are you going now?